Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Pool Dog Championship Arena here in Las Vegas for continuing coverage of the APA World Pool Championships. I'm your host, Jason Bowman. I'm joined by the Hall of Famer, the striking Viking, Ava Lawrence. Ava, I'm a little sad today because our World Championship journey is coming to an end, but we're going out with a bang, and that bang is the Nine Ball World Championship. It's a great way to end it, isn't it? It's been a fantastic week, both in here in the Pool Dog Arena and out there. Mini Mania, April Nine Ball, Women's Masters, all kinds of action going on, and then we end with this, so that's, good. that's great. There's a lot of excitement here in Pool Dog Arena as we cap off this event. $20,000 on the line in this Nine Ball match. Let's go ahead and introduce you guys to the teams we have from Florence, Kentucky. We've got the Rack Masters, and out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the team of Lep Life. So those are our two championship contenders here in the World Nine Ball Championship. Some rules here. APA rules, of course, apply in this match. Male, female teams with a max of eight players. You're going to see up to five players in a match today. There is the standard handicap limit of 23 for the teams. That means all five players' handicaps cannot exceed 23. Uh, players are allowed one coaching timeout per game. And in nine ball, Ava, just like in most of our nine ball events, each ball is worth one point, nine ball is worth two points, and players play to their individual ball count. And in this case... As we meet our players in the first match, we've got Josh Eilerman. Josh is a skill level 5. His opponent, John Perzell, also a skill level 5, which means they're racing to 38 points. Exactly. And uh, see the pressure of starting everything off, being first up. It's a little bit easier than the pressure of being last, of course, <laughs> but it kind of sets the tone it for the whole match. It depends on the score. Yeah, yes. it depends on what the score is in yeah. the last match. This right, is going to be go. John Perzell. Again, he's with Lep Life out of Philadelphia. He has your first break of the match. Good solid break, but nothing fell. Kind of ended up in a cluster down there at the other side of the table. He's going to start out with a defensive shot here. I'm sure Josh is going to look to be playing the safe on the one ball. He has a bunch of balls to try to hide behind here. And now the individual match scores in each of these nine ball matches, they'll be assigned an overall team point score at the end of the match. So depending on what the scores of the outcome of this match will determine how many team points they get. So we'll walk you through that as we go. All right, that safe was it well done. Looks like John's going to have to put a little bit of spin maybe on this ball, a little bit of left. Just pretend that you're trying to hit it just past the side pocket. It was a good hit, but a couple, two, three relatively easy shots coming up here. One ball, two is right here. Three is open. Four ball, it'll be a little bit of work. There's a potential combo available, but not easy one, so... But the one thing about nine ball in the APA format is you can grab the, some points for your team. It's not all about the nine here. Oh, that hurt. Missed the two in the side, scratched in the top corner. It's going to give ball in hand to his opponent. And the two will go down in this rack as a dead ball, which means no points will be awarded. In this first rack, each rack worth 10 points. And this is definitely going to go into safety here. Let's try to freeze that cue ball on the six. Getting rid of the two. That'll open it up a little bit. He'd love to go into the six ball a little bit with the cue ball. So that he broke him open at the same time. Well done. The three is still a bit of an issue for later on. I guess he's not able to go two rails down there at the bottom, so he's going to just go ahead and go two rails this way. Way overdid it. Way Another too much scratch. spin. Nope. Hold on. It is going to be ball in hand, though. No contact with the two ball. Not an easy situation here to get to that three, considering where the four and six are. A 
think as I look at the table, Ava, I was mistaken on that two ball still on the table. Yes. So that was a faux pas by your commentator. <laughs> it's early in the day. Here. Listen, it's only your second match one day. this whole week. So, I know. You know. I don't remember what the first one was, but it was kind of cute, whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. Timeout complete. Josh is prepared to shoot on the two. Got some help with the angle here to go come across to be able to play safe on this three ball. Can just shoot the three ball up and really drag the cue ball with some low right, or he can try to hide it behind the eight. Like Nicely that. Nicely done. That's not. There's coffee on this hit here. I don't know. We I don't back think to Josh Eilerman of the Rack Masters. I don't think he can go down on the bottom cushion there. Can't go down. There's nothing open, so I don't think it's a bad idea to try to. Yeah, that was kind of a desperation shot. It was not an easy situation to try to tie anything up either. One thing he's got going for him is if the four ball doesn't go past the six, but I think it does just barely, so we'll see what's going to happen here. Ball in hand for John per Perzel of Lep Life. They're from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They play out of the crazy leprechaun. Thus, Whoa. Lep Life, the team name. Crazy Leprechaun. Sounds like a fun place. Yeah. <laughs> sure, some folks tuning in from the Crazy Leprechaun. You're just joining us. You're watching coverage of the APA Nine Ball World Championship, the final championship to be decided here this week. 20,000 to the winner here in this match. And then we're packing our bags and heading home. It's been a great week, 10 days. It really has. Other than the little monsoon weather, <laughs> it's been It's been some rain out wonderful. here, no doubt. But I have to say it, it kind of helps the uh, dryness a little bit. It's actually been humid a little bit when you go outside. Yeah. So It was a nice rainbow out there last night after our... Yeah championship match team captains championship team from san diego that took home that title all right perfect hit it would be real thin and that wasn't too shabby even if you can curve around this and hit the four the eight ball has that pocket block now so great result there in a funny little spot Again, this is a race to 38 points. Both players, skill level five. Mm. Not enough a spin on that cue ball to come around. So, again, ball in hand here for John, but this time there's not much standing between him and a chance of running out here. Both these players are skill level five. Very capable players. Just got to decide which way to go here doesn't want to have too much angle on the five so he can stay down there for the six obviously just want to make sure he gets an angle on the six ball straight in would be not be oh he can't make the five wow well there's a window here though can play a defense sending the cue ball up table here. Real thin hit would bring it back towards the six. And a potential snooker on top of that with the seven nine being where they are. Well, that's a nice shot. Nice. Good speed too. Crowd here in Pool Dog Arena approving of the strategy there by Josh Eilerman. 
Nice view of the Pool Dog Arena here. Nice crowd today, too, Ava. Saturday it's here in Las Vegas. Yeah, considering how many people have gone home, I mean, uh, you know, most people plan to go home today or maybe the red eye tonight, but there's not a lot of chairs available in here. All right, now it'll be ball in hand. For Josh. As his teammates there look on, the Rack Masters, Florence, Kentucky. All right, I guess Josh says, I know how to play defense, too. He didn't just snooker him, but he froze the cue ball on the six. And that really made this kick shot difficult. I don't like it. Unless, well, he could go potentially this way with right spin and possibly come back here and hit it. Yeah, that's not going to work. That was a tough, tough hit. The fact that he froze the cue ball on that six didn't give him any options there. Five in the corner for Josh. He's sitting pretty there. Natural position up for the seven. Oh, he didn't hit it firm enough, I don't think. Did he? Yeah, just enough. An extra couple of turns there at the end gave him a good shot at it. Still a thin cut. But again, natural position. One rail back to the opposite rail. Just, oh, he overcut it. Holy smokes. And firm. There's a break for John and Team Lep Life. Three points still on the table here in Pool Dog Arena, this first match of the Nine Ball Championships. <laughs> Trick shot. Trick shot this early in the match. Kind of took that seven ball for granted there, was just focused on getting the cue ball down for the nine. Didn't quite get either one of those to work, but luckily that seven went in. We'll see if he can make this cut shot on the nine. Nice. nice. Two more nice points shot. there for John Purzell. Takes an early lead in this match, this race to 38 points. There was one dead ball in that rack. That was the eight ball. As you see Frank looking on here in Pool Dog Arena with his puppy dog eyes <laughs> and his wrinkly face, making us all miss our pets at home, no doubt. Big shout out to our friends at PoolDog.com. Action Cues, Aramith Billiard Balls. They are official sponsors of the APA and the World Pool Championships. Helping us bring you this great coverage. The sixth and final championship to be decided here in Pool Dog Arena this week. Started with the Jack and Jill championship way back on Monday. Tuesday we had the eight ball world championship. Wednesday was the ladies. Thursday the masters. Friday the team captains. And today, like we said, the nine ball championships. And all those matches, Ava, are available on our YouTube channel, so if you didn't get a chance to see them live, certainly you can go back and check those matches out, and we won't hate you for driving the viewership higher either. <laughs> we had some good ones this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Well, how about the Team Captain Championship oh my gosh. yesterday? If you that haven't watched great. that one, go back and take a look. You'll be happy. Drama till the end. Nice break there. Two balls on the break. Thin cut, can't do much with a cue ball here unless you decide to bank it. Three on the other side of the table. I think if he can get the cue ball out of the way, he'll bank it. Yeah, there you go. 
It was tough. Double kiss looked like it was very possible there, so he overcut it a little bit to avoid that and has left a shot. This is not the fun shot, though, considering you make this in here, you're flirting with a scratch in the side pocket, and it's a little too high, I believe, for him to cut it in the side pocket. kind of in that no man's land a little bit. Let's see if both of these players have gotten their nerves under control a little bit. They both look a little shaky on a couple of shots. Nice. Nice bank shot. Is he going to? No, no love there. Just didn't draw it quite enough or a little bit too much. So I'm sure he's going to go kicking it this way hope something good happens it's hard to control and play a defensive shot when there's that much space between the last cushion that you strike and the object ball so there you're just gonna you just try to hope hit and hope a lot of ball in hands early on in this match wouldn't you say yes Between very the first much first rack so. and now this rack Table was laying a little bit funny. Balls tend to kind of cluster up together and a few mistakes. Time out here at the table for the LEP life. As they talk things over here, a little strategy session, if you will, one time out per rack. That is Salih Mahmoud, Mahmoud, I believe. Mohammed. Are you talking about the player? Yeah. Lep Life, uh, Mohammed. Oh, is that how it's pronounced? Yep. Oh. Well, he's their skill level nine on their team, so he's going to be probably doing some of the timeouts, the Mohammed, majority of the timeouts. Yeah, Mohammed Saleh. Got it. And he is not going to be able to play in this match due to the skill levels available, I'm pretty sure. Wow. I wonder if that's makeable. If they're frozen or almost frozen, he may be able to... No, I don't think so. He should be able to cut it in, though. He's going to have to really s let the cue ball go fly around the table here. Try to find a path where you're not going to scratch, but it does look like you should be able to slice it in. Seen a lot of Lep Life fans out there this afternoon. Yeah. It's always fun that if you're playing out of the same place or in the same league or division to be able to sit at home and root for them, even if you can't be here. All you Lep Lifers out there, make sure you share the stream on your Facebook page so all the other Lep Lifers who may not know what's going on are in the mix, if you would. I know we'd certainly appreciate that, as would our sponsors. All right, another great chance for Lep Life and John Perzell to be able to get a little bit more space between them and the other team here and extend their lead. All right, so instead of drawing the cue ball back, he tried to Watch follow out. it. Ouch. <coughs> Boy, second time he had trouble with that uh, seven ball mm -hmm. down in that corner, isn't it? This time it cost him. Josh Eilerman with ball in hand here. We'll see. I love playing a three rail or a two railer here and out towards the center of the table, but he's going to come straight up and down, or he's going for the corner. I thought he was going side pocket there. That worked out perfectly. Nice shot. Josh and the Rack Masters play out of kick shots billiards back in Florence, Kentucky. I'm sure some folks back at kick shots tuning in, rooting them on.
No, no good. Pockets the eight in the corner, but scratches in the opposite corner, which means John Purzell will have ball in hand, and the eight ball for the second consecutive rack will go down as a dead ball. This is the time for, you know, for both players, a couple of mistakes that weren't expected there. To just let it go, shake it off, and look forward. Don't think about the past. Two more points for John. Well, he will have the break. been a great event here in Las Vegas. I want to make sure we give a shout out to all of our referees and league operators and all the volunteers that come out to help us put on the world's largest pool tournaments. No easy task, no small chore, I can assure you. Takes a village. Isn't that the saying? Takes a village as takes far a as village. raising a child. It takes a village to put on a <laughs> the world's largest pool tournament too. No question. I'm sure everybody's ready to go home and still got another day to pack, I, I would think, pack up and get everything out of here. I got to check in for my flight. I, think <laughs> I forgot to do that. Seaboarding group for me, probably. All right. No problem hitting this, obviously, for Josh, but again, no love there as far as an open pocket. I'd be surprised if he tries to cut that in backwards. So just, I would just go ahead and play this this way, dri drive the cue ball down and leave it behind this cluster of balls, or better yet, better yet, nice shot. Good control, good thinking there. Good control of the cue ball, just leaving it that right there, and that makes it a tricky kick shot here. Straight up and down. And here's an excellent opportunity for Josh Eilerman to be able to grab some points for his team. Again, each ball pocketed worth one point. The nine ball is worth two points. Each of these players needs a total of 38 points to win the first match. If he can hit this with a little bit of left, natural will come over here. The left should be able to bring it out this way for the three ball. Mm, can you get some help to slow that down? Nope. This is the first of potentially five matches we may see in this nine ball world championship. Good shot there. Decided in against going for the bank shot. When in doubt, look for a defensive shot. If you don't like the offense, go for a safety. If they both look about the same degree of difficulty, then you might as well just go for it and go offense. But he played a smart shot. Keep John working hard here for a shot himself. And that paid off. And this is Team Rack Masters from Florence, Kentucky, representing the South, <laughs> and Lep Life from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's the team on the right of your screen. And this here is Josh Eilerman from Rack Masters. I don't recall us having a team in Kentucky or from Kentucky in the finals. Not this, no, not this uh, week. Oh, not this week, but not that I can really recall. Really? I can't. Uh, maybe a Louisville team here or there, maybe. I don't know. Just can't think of any Kentucky teams. No, I teams. feel like I remember that. There wasn't, well, I don't know. The, our keyboard friends here, somebody was let us know. Probably, yeah. A little trivia there. Trivia that we don't have the answer to, though. <laughs> That's the only problem. 
guess we should start keeping track here and just, you know, having yeah. it all in well, front of us. The answers are out there if we just dig a little bit. Right now we're focused on the what's happening in front of us. As Josh Eilerman tries to close the gap here. See, Louisville has a women's team See, that I won said Louisville. back to back. Owensboro, Kentucky, huh? Okay, excellent opportunity here for three V's. That does ring a bell. John, mm -hmm. Louisville team, okay. Mm, got a little far. Little far. It's a backwards cut, but the beauty of it, if he makes it, he should be able to stop pretty much off the seven. Oh, he drew it a little bit. I thought he was going to kind of hit center there and go right into the seven. Now he's got a long tester and no real way to get back for the six. So just going to be, if he makes this five, it'll be two long shots in a row. This being the easier one of them, I would think. Nice shot. See if he can pull this one off. Your in-house league at the uh, APA headquarters, do you guys play nine ball as well or just eight ball? We switch. You switch back um, and forth? So okay. like one session we'll do eight ball, next session we'll do oh, nine ball. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Another timeout here for Lep Life. Let's see if he's going to go for having him try to make it. Or is he going to hit straight on, banking the six ball straight down table by the nine and leaving the cue ball behind the seven, eight? Oh, he went the other way. That'll work. It got just far enough. That last little roll got it to where he snookered. That was good shot, appreciated by the crowd. Still a few open seats here in Pool Dog Arena, but not many. It's really filled in this afternoon, mm -hmm. which is awesome. We want to see how this great event caps off. Good look there at the arena. John Purzell once again with ball in hand. Seen a lot of that in this first match. He just, mm. that's the second time that I've seen him just kind of take the ball for granted and he's so focused on the position. Got to really aim while you're standing up, feel how far, firm or where you want the cue ball to go, but you really got to make the ball, needless to say. So got a little lucky here. Josh doesn't have a good shot. He's going to play defense again. He's been playing some good saves. This one came up. A little short in the perfect department. But John steps to the table again, and he's got another opportunity to run out here. All right, let's see if he can slide this eight ball in without messing with the cue ball. It's a little too firm and too full. He's liable to go across and scratch. So just a nice little touch here. Nice little touch. No, no. Watch out. Uh-oh. Third rack There's in the, the row. There's the yeah. eight ball will be dead. Yeah. Opportunity now, two points for Mr. Eilerman. Well, he needed this. And his team needed this, 18-9 versus 27. That could end up playing a part later on in this match. On top of that, Josh is obviously going to have the break 
chance to make a couple more balls potentially and keep control of the table as long as he doesn't scratch. Somebody asked what lip life means. They play out of a location called the Leprechaun Lounge. Crazy, Is crazy Leprechaun. Crazy Leprechaun. I guess if you hang out at the Crazy Leprechaun, you're living the Lep life. Lep life. <laughs> Cruising in the Lep life. $20,000 on the line here in this match. Runner-up's going to take home 10000 We had two teams finish in third place this morning here in Las Vegas. Each of them taking home $5,000. We had four carat diamonds out of Port Arthur, Texas. We had a team of Stumble Inn out of Godly, Illinois. So the congratulations to them. Each of them took home again 5000 Tied for third place. Eilerman now with the break. Solid break. Just avoided scratching there. Pocketed the four in the corner on the break. But no shot on the one. It looks like he should be able to just go by the seven ball and come around for the one ball here. It's close. If he can dig it in deep enough, I'm just going to have to hit it with a little bit of right if it's even possible. It's close, but with the seven ball being where it is, that's about the path you want. What you need to do if you're going to, he's going to, well, he's going to go the other way. That's a tough kick here. Got to hit right before the side pocket. Nope. George, if you're looking for who finished where, you can go to our CompuSport bracket, which is online. Take a look at how teams finished, who finished where. One in the corner for Josh Perzell, another point on the board. All right, grabbed his points there. We'll see if he can slice this three ball into the corner pocket. Five being where it is, that doesn't hurt. That was a nice shot, and it looks like John has kind of found his footing here, struggle a little bit. Both players struggle a little bit here early in the early goings, but I look from that shot right there, the last couple, Caught the edge of that side pocket. It looks a little pocket. more comfortable. Not there, but that was probably commentator's curse, if, if you believe in such things. <laughs> I do believe in such things, having <laughs> seen such things many times. Yes. Been part of such things. <laughs> it is a real thing. Can't tell you how or why it happens when it happens, but it does happen. Five in the corner. Oh, was it all the way the down. Like crazy. He just needed a nice little touch to go back there, but, and again, he's going to have to be careful that there's not a scratch here as well. Oh, he decided to play defense. Hmm. Not bad. Another time out here for the Lep Life. Did we confuse Josh and John? John and Josh? If we did, you'll have to forgive us. Since we can't go back and change it. <laughs> Mohamed Saleh out with a coach here. He's a skill level nine. Did you say we would not see him based on the skill levels? I hadn't done the math, but it sounded like he's unlikely to play in this final. I don't think that they can. Doing the math here.
Nice shot there. Oh boy. When it rains, it pours. Everybody's having a tough time with that seven down in that corner. Mm hmm. I feel like there's some common themes in this match. Almost every rack. Dead too. eight <laughs> balls. Missed seven balls in that corner. Lots of ball in hand situations. Overcut it. See what I'm saying? Yeah, there's that <laughs> seven. I'm going to have to move it to another corner, I think. Okay, time to take a deep breath and just stay down until you hear the ball go in here. Just slice it in. There's nothing to worry about as far as position. And there it goes. Third time's the charm for the seven ball to drop. Just focus on making this eight ball here. Can draw it back. I don't think he can make it in the side, but if he could, well, he might be able to. Then he would go three rails around, but no, he's just going to make sure he takes his eight ball here. Good idea. Get that point on your side of the score. Now, what, bank shot? You think he's going to bank it or cut it here? I, I bet he's going to bank it. Looks like it. Unsuccessful bank yeah. attempt. But l look at that leave. That's not an easy nine ball right there. John Purzel back to the table. Yeah, that's scratch shot if you shoot it in the corner. Cutting it in the side is pretty hopeless, so bank shot maybe. Oh, he was able to avoid it there by drawing a little bit, but no good. Let's see if that lands right in front of the side. No. <laughs> <laughs> Feels Turn like the match is uphill, there. you know. The balls are not cooperating yeah. in this match so far. Just got to keep grinding away, point by point. Another chance for John. Finish this rack off. Extend his lead. There you see the check in the background. $20,000 for the winning team. And, and the trophies and the bragging rights, mind you. Frank's coming home with us, though. Frank's coming home with <laughs> Okay. Don't even think about <laughs> taking Frank. As John Purzel takes a, another two points there. Extends his lead. Fist bumps all around for the Lep life after that rack. Been a great tournament, as we mentioned. Nearly 1.3 million in prize money, most of which has now been paid out here in Las Vegas. 49 states, three countries, including our friends from Japan, who were here for the first time since the pandemic. 328 tables, almost 14,000 participants. Ava, and like you've said a couple mm -hmm. times, that doesn't necessarily include spouses and friends or folks that just came out to play Mini Mania of which there were 800 plus events. 560 teams in the nine ball world championship. We are down to the final two. And John Purzel is back at the table, ready to break. Cue ball note stops near the center of the table there and he might be jacked up just a little bit over this four ball, but he does have a shot, I think, on this one. It's close. He can definitely hit it. 
He's taking a peek here to see if it's even makeable. It is. Nice. Oh, look out. Look out. Look out. All right. He's all good. Another two points, the one and the five that he got on the break. Puts him at 25 points. Now 13 away from victory. You look out here, too. This is the third time we've seen one of those... I hate to call them automatic scratches, but it is kind of what they are. The tangent line lines right up there in that situation. You have to kind of measure what happens with the cue ball once they make contact to make the ball. And if it, it heads right into the pocket, you need to put a little draw on it. In that situation, sometimes play it slower. With high, you can avoid it. But learning what the tangent line is all about, you're going to do yourself a huge favor to avoid scratches get better at breaking up clusters, position play. It helps with everything. It's a, it's a really important thing to learn. So if you are not familiar with the tangent line or you have somebody that can work with you to show you what that is all about, you can look it up on YouTube. Just put in billiards, tangent line, something like that. And it's um, that is, I don't care what your skill level is, that's really going to get you out of a lot of tough spots and avoid getting into them. Josh back at the table, trailing by nine points. Looks like he's going to try for this combo on the seven ball here, by Jason. Oh, no, just that'll work. Into the rail off the six. And all of a sudden, he's got a good chance here to make pick up a couple or four more points for his team. Uh -oh. Seven in the uh -oh. side, but the uh -oh. cue ball once again, nope, holds on. <laughs> Just held on there. John was on his way out of his chair there. We've seen a few uh, scratches on the seven ball, so. Yeah. Maybe the pattern is broken now, Ava. The seven yeah. ball will <laughs> forever go the rest of this match. Now we're going to work on the eight, not an easy shot there. And left a really good shot here for John. Natural position if he puts a little center on this. A little bit below center and bring it up straight up towards the nine ball. I'm going to talk about it for a second, having a timeout left. Muhammad very animated with his Yes, he is. <laughs> I gestures. saw him earlier. Yeah, he was playing actually against one of the teams from our area, his team. And he was very, very yeah. hands Must animated. Must be effective. They're here in the finals. Yeah. Eight oh. ball in the corner, but I'm guessing that's not what Muhammad wanted him to do. No Good problem shot. there. Good shot there. Two more points. Extends his lead. Much to the delight of the crowd here in Pool Dog Arena. We'll very much approve of that shot. John Purzell getting ever closer, Ava, to victory here. If you haven't signed up yet for the fall session, now is the time. Go to our website, poolplayers.com. You can get signed up today. That you know, The journey here to the World Championships all starts by becoming an APA member. So, My Plus fall is a great time to get going, right? Yes, absolutely. My daughter and her husband, Nikki and Toby, they are home 
setting everything out, helping everybody try to find location or team or team find a player. And, and I'm here having a good time with you, Jason. Yep. Sweating all these matches. Ten points away now for John Purzell. And, ooh, I just thought that was going to scratch on him. Nothing goes on the break. And it feels like quite a bit of the time here, I feel like Josh has stepped up to a, one of those, oh, my, can I get a, sh you know, <laughs> made some mistake. Yeah. Both players have. That is to be expected. These guys are not pros. But uh, John has an open, sh I mean, uh, yeah, Josh has an open shot, but boy. See what he's going to do. Maybe play a billiard on the eight ball here. No, nope, try to cut it in. That didn't work. It eh, sort of worked. If John can hit half this one ball, then he should have a chance to make the two if he had hits it very slowly so he doesn't get snookered. Another timeout. Taking that early. Well, sure. Mohamed Saleh may not play in this match, but he's getting plenty of face time. <laughs> yes. He's making sure. It's definitely a part of this match. There's no question about that. As the Rack Masters <coughs> look on there, team from Florence, Kentucky. He's going to try to have him do a hit and stick here. The fact that the, the object ball is so close to the rail makes it much easier to control. If you get a full hit on this one ball, you can hit and stick just like that. It just it just slid out a little bit. Still a good shot. A full hit there, Jason, and it would have just stopped right behind the nine. Another good shot to practice. Nice long shot there. Pockets the one in the corner. Nice touch. Goes all the way back up the table to get that two. Now at 20 points is Josh Eilerman. Needs 18 points to John's 10. I would try to cut this in here, because even if you miss that, you have a chance at the carom. The def defensive shot is not easy here. Combination is really difficult. The state not represented here at the World Championships, the state of North Dakota. I've had a few questions about that. Oh, there goes four ball. Oh. No, it doesn't. <laughs> How did that not go in? Sitting halfway in the pocket. Yeah. Just going to need a little bit of a nudge. There's no nudging, Jason. There's no nudging. No nudging? No nudging. Again, 10 points away, John Purzell. Eight points on the table. We got, a, we got away with one there. Brings Josh back. Josh has a chance of shooting this three ball up table and just drift in this cue ball. Just focus on the cue ball here. Five is huge to be able to hide behind. Even if he doesn't get away with the snooker, if he gets it firm enough, it'll go up to where the six will block the pocket. Oh, he went for the bank. Excuse me. Nice. Making a statement there, Josh. Good shot. Now we'll see if this is where... Josh can settle in a little bit, run some balls. Mm -hmm. 
just seems like you said earlier, every time he's been at the table, he's not had the best layout, some challenging shots. Yeah, between that and John playing some good defense and all that, it's just been like a little bit of an uphill battle for him. But, oh, but then you can't do that when you have the opportunity. It's go time. He got a little lucky this time for sure. We'll see if he goes rail first here on this. This side is dangerous because of, for obvious reasons, with a. So it's much better off coming one rail or two rails here. Two rails, it's a larger ball to hit. One rail, you have a better chance of making it. That's not going to work. All right. Josh, another opportunity to inch closer here and try to close this gap in this match before it's too late. I don't know that we've seen the Rackmasters take a timeout, have we? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe Josh is uh, not a timeout kind of guy. Just leave Sometimes me, let that's just the leave case. me be, let me do my thing. That's the truth, isn't it? Charlie Hans tuning in. Hello, Charlie. Oh, hi, Charlie. Charlie is a legend here at the APA Championships. Multi-time wheelchair champ. Ouch. But he has definitely closed the gap. It's only three points between them now. It looked like for a while there that John Purzel was going to kind of run away with it. But Josh has slowly but surely inched his way back into mm. this match. Oh, this is might be three points here to kind of edge out a little bit farther, a little bit closer to that elusive 38 points for John. That's not a mistake you want to make late in this first match. Mm -mm. He pockets these two balls. That would be a six-point swing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He's not going to scratch, but he's not going to like it. Hi, Matthew. Glad you're tuning in. Matt's tuning in again. Mm -hmm. Matt, one of the loyal viewers. Appreciate all you folks tuning in this coverage of the APA Nine Ball World Championship. Oh, is he playing that in the side? Yes, he is. And guess what? He played perfect speed to have a chance at a defensive shot if he were to miss it. So that was a good, smart shot and we have mentioned that every day so far that even though this is the last of our championships this cloth doesn't have much action so it's pretty fast and even though it's more humid here in Las Vegas than normal due to the monsoon rain we've had it's still going to be a little bit faster because it's dry the lights there's a lot of lights in here shining on that table and that's going to dry out both the cushions and the cloth a little bit okay looks like it's almost on the rail it's going to have to really slice this oh you're going for the bank Watch out. The dance continues. Two points still on the table. Let's see if Josh can keep his head still on this one and just follow through. Aim while you're standing up. Short backstroke here being on the rail. Oh, yes, he just Got barely it. made it unless Watch that out. cue ball Watch goes out. in. That's going to be close. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> Cue ball hangs on in the pocket, much to drama. the delight of the <laughs> audience here in Pool Dog Arena. Everyone holding their breath, wondering if that ball would hold on by the narrowest of margins. And much to the relief of Josh and his Rack Masters teammates, that's another <laughs> big two points for him. And the break. Hello, Sean. Thanks for tuning in. A lot of nice folks. I've really met a lot of nice folks out here, Ava, specifically that have, you know, come up and talked to me about the streaming and how much yes. they enjoy it. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate hearing that and glad you guys enjoy tuning in. But it's always nice to hear that from folks. I've only met great people yeah. out here. It's been a lot of fun. Made some new friends. Some crazy friends, I might add, that I've <laughs> picked up along the way. Lovable, but very funny. Well, look at here. Now within one point. And a bank shot. Very makeable bank shot here on the one. You can see the six ball is gone. Two is down on this part of the pocket. I mean, at the table right there. So we'll see if he can pull this bank off. The bank is as easy as a defensive shot would be, really. So you might want to go for it unless he just wants to bump it towards the 7-4 and come around. It's hard to know. First time we've ever met these guys. Yeah, who is more of an offense? Josh does seem like he's more of an offense, I mean, a defensive player than many fives that we've had. But... Always been spoiled doing the WPBA and even the, and also the men's, the commentary on ESPN because you know the players after a while so yeah. much what style they have if even as far as position goes do you go one rail or three rails so here we haven't met these guys or yeah. watched them play much other than a few shots in the semifinals so see another timeout here again you get one timeout per rack. And Muhammad's back again. Well, how hard is it, you know, well, you've probably never been in this situation, but if you were skill level nine like Muhammad, you're here in the championship, you're the highest rated player on either roster, and you're not going to play in the match. That's got to be a little bit heartbreaking, I would think, you know? Nerve-wrecking, if nothing else. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, you just want to take some control. and yes. And not being able to play, but at the same time, I mean, he's so active, he's so into it, he makes sure that he takes the time out when he thinks mm -hmm. it's appropriate. But yeah, a little frustrating not being able to play. I guess that doesn't matter what your skill level is, you probably feel that way. If yeah. you know. Might be a few out there that are like, whew, thank goodness I don't have to play in this arena with right. all these people watching me, I don't think I can handle it. Well, I find it interesting that the one player on Left Live that has not played a match yet is the captain, Mike Quinn. I'm not sure if Mike is not here or if he's just going, hey, you guys. No, he's here. I talked you to guys him before the win. match. <laughs> yeah, he's the bar owner at the Crazy Leprechaun. He's That's the cool. He's the leader of the Lep Life. I like that. All right, uh, it's almost a perfect defensive shot there, but John can see the edge of this one ball and just kind of tap it a little bit and come out and use the four for a blocker. Just be careful so it doesn't go out too far off the seven. Oh, yeah, that's no rail. That's going to be ball in hand. Josh now with a chance to take his perhaps first lead of the match. Mm -hmm. He can piece together a little run here. Ball in hand. Andre says that Muhammad doesn't need to play. He helped get us here. Oh, and no there's doubt. a lot of truth no to doubt. that too. That happens a lot and 
takes, like you said, it takes a village with, you know, within the team. I mean, you just kind of help where you can, do the best you can. And look at this match. For the first time, Josh Eilerman has taken the lead. And he's not stopping there. No. Seven points away from victory. And it was looking suspect there for a while that John was going to go ahead and run away with this and, and get the first win to Lep Life. But Josh has come alive here and really just fought and clawed his way back. And now all of a sudden, I guess he came with a confidence knowing that he's close or maybe it's just the nerves kind of, he just said, you know what, I'm just going to loosen up and play here. Had a few things go his way the latter part of the match, and here he is. I noticed his captain said something to him before this rack. I don't know what it was. Snap but out of yeah, it? Yeah, he said <laughs> he just met him. It's the first time I've really seen any communication there, so whatever he said, it appears to have worked because Josh is now running out this rack and opening up a nice lead late in the match. Eight in the side, well positioned on the nine. See if he can avoid being sharked being on the rail here. This is a pretty important nine ball. It's a very important nine ball. I might add, nice sh nice stroke, nice shot. Big two points. And he's going to have the break going into what could be what he wants to be the last rack of this particular match. We come towards the end of this first match of the APA Nine Ball Championship. Here at Pool Dog Arena, 20,000 on the line here. Of course, our sponsors, Action Cues, Aramith Billiard Balls, and our friends at PoolDog.com. They are our presenting sponsors this year, the folks at Pool Dog. Helping us bring you not just coverage of this match, but all six championships. One point here, Ava, and it's over. One ball on the break. Oh, a four ball was heading mm -hmm. right there, but it, could, <laughs> it came out. Okay. He was laughing there. Dust, darn it. He had a couple of balls were close to going in. A relieve John Purzel at the table now with an opportunity. And do not count him out. He, does, he only needs, what was it, seven balls, I believe? Uh, nine points. I think he's at 29, yeah. Okay. 29. Nine points away. Another timeout here. Tall order. When yeah. your opponent needs just one ball, a lot of pressure. Mohamed Saleh wants to call the timeout early in this rack. Probably not a bad strategy considering his opponent needs just one. But I believe Pocket offhand and not looking it up here, I think this next shot is very important. That one right there, even if he loses at this point, instead of getting a 14-6 loss, now it's a 13-7 loss. Every so point matters. Every point for the team matters. You've got to remember, even if you don't win, grab as many points as you possibly can. And it doesn't look like mm. he's got to get another chance at the table. But you know what? That one point could really make a team match point. Absolutely yeah. right. Absolutely. That's a good point. All right. Josh Eilerman, ball in hand on the two. This is for the victory in the first match. Nice comeback there. An impressive comeback. Early on, it was tough go for Josh. Hung around, persevered, and pulls that one out. And what'd you say the point split's going to be on that, Ava? I believe it's going to be 13 7 for the team. Okay. 13 7 in favor of the Rack Masters from Kentucky. They have the early lead here at Pool Dog Arena. We'll have our next match here in a few moments, but while we have a minute, let's hear a word from our friends at pooldog.com.
and we are here with Veronica Spiro, Joe Colt, Jonathan Pavelski. How are you feeling? Totally unbelievable. I had no idea I'd do this. Amazing. No, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. Overwhelmed. <laughs> Mind blowing. I mean, I'm shaking. This is amazing and exciting. J, Jeremy Jones, Team USA, Moscone captain. What a way to start off this year's US Amateur Championship. We've got Rachel Lang. Rachel is undefeated from Catskill, New York, taking on Stacey Bourbeau, a former US Amateur Champion. Down to just the eight ball here. There we go. Fires it in. Yeah. There you have it, folks. Hello, I'm Stacey Bourbeau, and I am the 2022 US Women's Amateur Champion. Final match in this great event. We got an all Texas final, which I know suits you, Mr. Yeah, I'm Long. pretty happy. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Lone so. Star. Uh, we've got Ernesto Bayawa, the 2011 U.S. Amateur Champion. He's going to be competing against Jacob Watson. Oh, sweet shot. Got it. There you go, folks. Wow. Jacob Watson about to come of age before our very eyes here at Strokers. Wow. Nine ball falls, folks. Jacob Watson, yeah. Tyler, Texas, the 2022 U.S. Amateur Champion. I'm Jacob Watson, and I just won the 2022 U.S. Amateur Championship. All right, we are back here at Pool Dog Arena, continuing coverage of the APA Nine Ball World Championship. At the table is Rhonda Hodge of the Rack Masters. She has the break. Her team leading the match. 13 to 7 by way of a Josh Eilerman victory. Rhonda is a skill level 2. She's going to need 19 points. Her opponent here at the table now is Star Goris of Lep Life. She is a skill level 3. She's going to need 25 points. It's a little bit of a point differential here for the first time in this match. There's a good break there by Rhonda, but nothing went in. The only good thing for her is that Star just had that one shot on the one ball. Very tough to get back to the table for the two. So she might go for a bank here. No. Defense. I like it. Smart play. Rhonda back at the table. Rhonda is the wife of Rackmasters team captain Greg Hodge. Their son Gregory, or Greg Jr., also on the team, but not here in Las Vegas. Look at you, Barbara Bush. You are uh, right on top of things here with my bio. <laughs> did you say Barbara Bush? That's her name. Oh, wow. And uh, yes, I did start playing. I mean, I came over to the United States after I won the European Championship when I was 17. I didn't start till I was 14 Ooh. in Sweden and became obsessed like so many of you guys. Rhonda catches the eight ball, and it'll be ball in hand to star. On the team scoreboard, what does it take to win? Overall, 51 is the magic number in nine ball for the team. If somebody hits 50 and they have won th uh, three out of the five matches, that would also finish the match. Another early timeout here. 
In this particular match, the race is 25 to 19, and 25 is what star for Team Lep Life needs to go to. Rhonda needs to go to 19. I'm surprised we saw a timeout this early in the rack. Yeah, but maybe not as bit. much as we've seen the timeouts used by the Lep Life. They they seem intent on using them and not holding yes, them back. So, yes. you know, maybe that's the strategy and the most important thing it is more important to an eight ball to keep it for the end. So many times I see that a timeout is taken mm -hmm. after when there's just still mo majority of the balls left on the table and yeah. um if, the, if it's a high scale level player I understand but lower then just save it towards the end there with the eight. Yeah, but in nine ball, I mean, it's a good point. Like, an early timeout could mean the difference between three sure. or four early points in the rack. So, that's going to be ball in hand. There was no rail after contact there on the three, as you could tell. So Rhonda gets to place the cue ball anywhere on the table. <laughs> no timeouts left behind. I like that. Yeah. Chance now for Rhonda to pick up her first point of the match. She can pocket this three. That's an even smarter move there. Just make sure she plays it a little firmer than, well, she can't quite make up her mind. I would think corner pocket with a little bit of an angle to follow it down. Rackmaster's going to talk this over a little bit. First time that I believe we've seen a timeout for the Rackmasters. A good time, too, to take a timeout is when you realize that if they make one ball, they have a chance to make maybe yep. make two or three. Or if you see the player trying to make a ball, but if they do, there's nowhere else to go and they could get snookered. That could cost them a lot more. That's kind of a judgment call on the on the coach's part to see how much you know to try to avoid as much damage. And again, I'm talking about skill level, lower skill levels too, one, two, three, maybe even four. Other than that, you look at it, the match a little bit differently. Hmm. This will be a chance for Star to make this three in the corner. Star is a skill level three, needs 25 points. She's going to have to barely hit this unless she has the stroke to really dig deep enough and firm enough to shoot a stop shot here. She better baby it because this table does play pretty fast. So she doesn't roll in there. She can also see if she can cheat the pocket a little bit, maybe overcutting it to the one side and another. Did you happen to see which team put up first in the first match? No. No. We were kind of running around at that time, so. Getting everything ready. Maybe we'll yeah. get that information. I'm curious which team put up first. That dictates each subsequent match and who puts up then. So, I think she was trying to go rail first there, not to have to be stuck down there on this four. I'm a little surprised. So the rack masters were first to put up in match one. So Lep Life opted in the second match to put Star up. Rackmasters countered with Rhonda. Well, and that's interesting to know the strategy. Absolutely, and that could have something to do also with being able to play Leroy Smith. Their skill level seven. That's the, about the only way that he's going to have a chance to play is by playing Rhonda here. Not that Rhonda can't get her 19 points. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying in the scheme of things, you kind of that's one thing that those of us who didn't grow up playing league. Um, I'm in awe of it. I'm in awe of the captains and the coaches, the person planning what we're going to do next, who we're putting up next. Nice shot. Um, there's an art to it. Mm -hmm. There's an art to it, definitely. 
it doesn't always work. Sure. But it can still be art, even if it doesn't sell. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The other interesting thing about Lep Life is they actually, this is another one of those teams that lost in the first round and crawled all the way back through the one loss side to get to the finals. All right. Hi, Mike McKinney. I got to say hi to my peeps. Well, I'll try to say hi to everybody if I happen to look down on the on the stream. But Mike is from the Coastal Carolina APA, so I have to give a shout out because I can. It's true. You can. I can. All right. So Star has a chance, good chance here to get back to the table after that shot on the three. Now she can make this four ball. And if she really hits a smooth high ball, she should be able to come across the table to play the five. Nicely done. Uh, somebody asked about timing. No, there is no time clock on this at, um, in the very finals. We've been discussing it a little bit, um, or in the national office has, trying to figure out should we, shouldn't we. Um, at this point, this is the only match in the tournament where there's no shot clock. We figure there's enough pressure on these guys playing here in the Pool Dog Championship arena. It's very nerve-wracking down in that pit. You got a couple of hundred people sitting here live watching, an awful lot more than that watching at home. And um, once in a while, you will see players that don't even seem phased by it. Some seem to play better and, and kind of like that attention and don't phase them much at all. But many get really nervous down here. So if you haven't played, if you haven't played in this arena or any kind of a pro-looking arena before with this kind of a stream and this kind of an audience, let me tell you. It's nerve-wracking. Oh, look at that. That'll work. I was... Well done, Rhonda. I was kind of going back through some of the score sheets for some of the other championship matches. I think this is the probably the lowest-rated players we've actually seen in a match all week that we've been in Pool Dog Arena. There, we may have seen another three, but I don't believe we've seen a two. Rhonda, the first two to, mm -hmm. to debut here in Pool Dog Arena. Just goes to show you when you join an APA league, you just never know where you may find yourself. And it's like you said, she's found herself in a very <laughs> somewhat, I shouldn't say very, but a somewhat stressful situation. That's true. All right, now the ball in hand situation for Rhonda here. They've already taken the time out, so Rhonda's just going to step up and do her thing. A lot to be said for not questioning yourself. So often we see players take way too long to where by the time they shoot the shot, they have talked them themselves out of everything. Not quite sure, should I, shouldn't I? And so much about pool is being committed and using a committed stroke. And Wanda, Rhonda just steps up. Where's my next ball? Good shot. She's settled in a little bit here now. That whole rack so far has been natural, automatic position, and she has stepped up to the task of making the shot. Very makeable nine ball here. Oh, oh missed the nine she ball. Missed the whole thing. Ball in hand to star. Chance for two more points would give her a seven three split in the first rack. That's a tough miss on that nine ball. Yeah, Four she played swing. so well up to up to that point, but I mean, she just uh, she had to hit it really, really thin, and yeah, she has a skill level too. Up until that point, she really did a great job making those shots. Star will have the break here. Referee prepares the rack. You see Star there chalking up her Q-tip, preparing for the break. A 
Again, in case you just joined us, the team score so far after the first match is 13-7 in the favor of Rack Masters from Florence, Kentucky. Two on the break. And Star and is hoping to change on the that. Break. Nice Two big break. Points for Star. And she only needs 25 points, so. Yep. And she's got a great shot here on the one. A little trickier is going to be coming up on the three ball after that, but just having a shot right after the break is a beautiful thing. She's kind of eyeing the combination if she just shoots a stop shot there. One in the corner. I like the speed of both of these players. They don't take too long. They stay down long enough to look at it. A lot of people forget this is still a, a sport. We may not be as physical as other sports, but moving around the table kind of gets your heart pumping, and you heart pumping means more oxygen to your brain. You stand there and just stare down the shot l too long, and all of a sudden everything's going to go cloudy. You're going to doubt yourself, and if you doubt yourself at all, you're not going to hit it with an, uh, with any authority, hit the stroke with any authority. So take your time when you're down on the shot, but move around look while you're looking at the table. Move, move, move. All right, not much of an offensive shot for Rhonda to look at here. She might be able to play a good defense, or if she can't find one, just go ahead and hit him hard. Sometimes that's the right shot. Very common. I've seen that shot overcut. Very few players undercut that shot. Most amateurs will overcut it, so you just have to aim when you're standing up and then trust it. Even doesn't doesn't look like you're gonna make it. Just but trust where you have lined up. All right, and Star's gonna get another shot at the three ball here. Nice four five combination laying right in the pocket. So six ball is on the same side of the table. So even though stars is a skill level three, she's got a great opportunity here to pick up four or five shots if she can get down there. Did she get there? I don't think so. Maybe rail first would work. Combination works out. Oh, it's actually ball in hand on that. Yep. Dead ball. Successful shot there by Rhonda. Nice position on the six. Doesn't look like she's cutting it enough. It looks like almost like she is banking this. She is, and how nice. did she hit it? And check out position on this <laughs> one. She just she, smiled. She looked She thrilled. went, oh yeah, I got this. Eight and nice side. shot. That was funny. I don't know if you looked up in time, but she was, she was yeah. <laughs> giggling. She surprised perfect herself. The position ended up there, yeah. All right, missing the nine ball, but not 
a great opportunity for Star. Star is happy just being back at the table, obviously, but not an easy shot for her now. Timeout has already been used in this rack. I don't know that we've seen a rack for the Lep Life where there hasn't been a timeout. No, no Mohammed, he, he's the strategy yeah, is clearly he's to definitely going to use no every timeout, timeout left behind. Yeah, yeah. which is fair. He wants to use them makes sense. Certainly in the nine ball format, every point or every ball worth a point. Look at look this! At look here. at this! Look at this shot! Holy smokes, woman! Nine in the corner, big two points at the end of that rack. Oh, look at there. Very deserved, and how See about that opponent. class by Rhonda there? I love that. Yeah. She went up and fist pumped her for that great shot. Nice show of sportsmanship there. She gave her a little fist bump. We have seen some great, well, every year that I'm here, I always love watching the sportsmanship, appreciate it, you know, when the opponent makes a good shot. It's easy to root for and appreciate your teammates but sometimes you got to give it to your opponent and just say you know well done yeah star extends her lead in this match and she's racing to 25 ronda needs to get to 19 based on their skill level differential i um I usually tell my teams if, when they get ready to go, my pl the players from my area when they come out here, is that if you don't show great s sportsmanship, then don't come home. <laughs> 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 Just stay out there. All right. So dry break there after the nice shot on the nine ball. Brings Rhonda back to the table. Trailing in this match. Cannot pocket the one on the side. Uh oh. Scratch. So sends the one ball on a trip around the table. Scratches in the corner. Ball in hand to Rhonda Hodge. Nice time to have a ball in hand. One and two are close to each other. Rhonda being a skill level two, she's going to try to make sure she shoots a stop shot here. Comes back just a hair so she doesn't get snookered behind the three. The two ball is right there, so... She can make this and shoot a stop shot. She's shooting down on the cue ball. Hit it with some authority. Not that much authority. Holy smokes. Oh, she can hit the two. I think she can make it. Grabs the bridge. No, oh, picked up that one point. And again, didn't leave much for Star. No. Mohammed or Mike Saleh can, uh, cannot play in the finals. They've already gotten to the point where he, yeah, he can't play at this point. But he sure is taking advantage of all the timeouts we yeah. noticed that so Heavily we'll be involved. seeing him anyway yeah. yeah his presence will be felt in this match even if he doesn't wield a cue stick looks like she's going to try the defensive shot if she doesn't scratch it's a good one and i believe that we're going to have the referee get a really good spot to watch this from because I don't think she can hit straight on it. And if she tries it, then he really has to take a look at it and make sure that she goes rail first. She can go below it into the bottom cushion. 
All right, here we go. Let's see. Yeah, that was no good. It's a ball in hand for Rhonda there. Rhonda Hodge of the Rack Masters has seven points. Chance for her eighth in this race to 19 for her. Now 11 points away. The star is 12 points away. Numbers being what they are as far as skill levels, that means Star is slightly ahead in this match. But Rhonda is definitely uh, in this match, no question. Nice shot. Pocketing that ball. She didn't leave herself much for the next shot. But at this point, you know, if you just make one or two balls at a time, neither player need a lot, needs a lot of points. A total of 19 that Rhonda needs for Team Rackmasters. Total of 25 <laughs> for Star. The familiar timeout per rack. Our new favorite timeout guy. Mohamed Saleh. I've seen some people call him Mike. Mm hmm. All right, good try there. Oh, good shot, girl. Those long, long straight in ones are usually tricky, but she handled that like a champ. We'll see what she's going to do with a five ball here. I think she's going to play defense and just kind of bank it across probably, or is she, she's not cutting this, is she? Holy smoke, she tried it. Rhonda now 10 points away. Star still needing 11. Not a bad leave either. We got to confirm. Chris Small says in Philly we all call him Mike. Mike. So you know what? Let's go with Mike. All right. The second half of the match, we'll go with Mike. I think one thing for everybody to pay attention to at home, which I see that a lot of the teams that might get knocked out early or not get knocked out early in the World Qualifiers, Triannuals, Tri Cups at home, is that both of these players have played a number of defensive shots so far. So it's obviously, whether it's Mike on that team or somebody else in their history of playing, both of them, it's really said if you can't make a ball, then look for some kind of defense. So a two or a three playing defense, some people get very upset about that and go, there ain't, they ain't no three, they ain't no, you know, that <laughs> kind of thing. They that always say ain't. Why do they always say ain't? I know. Well, um, you know, I've been living in South Carolina <laughs> long enough now. <laughs> but it's I mean, it's true. I mean, just educate a little bit. It doesn't yeah. mean that they can run racks or put, you know, reverse draw on it. But you can, everybody can think a little bit. All right, it's now a race to 10 points for both these ladies. Now 
No, it's, <laughs> there's, you know, I love the fearlessness in both of these players. They just kind of decide what to do and attack it. Sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. Neither player obviously focuses a ton on position at this point, being a skill level two and three, but they can make balls. I just love everything about this match, though. A two mm -hmm. versus a three with so much on the line here you in bet. the middle of Pool Dog Arena. I mean, it's just a great example of what you can achieve even at a lower skill level. Correct. It's, it's what makes APA so great. And there's a lot of pressure here on Star being down, you know, if after the first match being down 13-7. Mm -hmm. She really would be great if she could, if you know, win this match but also the points have a lot to do with this nice, nice. Uh oh you got to give it to her her position has not been stellar by any means but she has managed to pocket the balls and now i, I know the referee is going to get close because this is almost straight in if it n if it's not completely straight in now we got to look for a double hit no double hit. Nicely done. That Two worked out perfectly. Ball was straight in. Two more points for Star. She gets ever closer to that magic number of 25. Now five points away to Rhonda's 10. Yeah, a lot of uh, local areas in, in league, usually the threes get two timeouts, but in the uh, championship, I know in our local championship, high level play, same thing here, then it uh, threes and above get one timeout. And maybe even the two ones and twos, I'm not sure. But apparently I think that's the case here on the national level, world level. Star had a pretty solid break the last time. See if she can pick up a couple points again. There's she one. She does. Oof. Eight ball just held on there on the side. Got the six ball on the break. At this point, if Star does win this match it's right now it's a 16-4 win for them oh look at there Got a little lucky needs is two a more yeah <laughs> one ball went off the seven i'm not sure that's what she intended to happen there but she'll take it and a good shot and the two on top of it the timeout here the ever popular Mike Soleil, Mr. Timeout, to you and me. <laughs> Sometimes you see guys give or women, whoever, give a timeout, and the player goes, "Yeah, but," and then you go, "Yeah, okay, okay, but this is what you're gonna do." <laughs> Oh, not what she wanted there. And these are the two points. I would definitely take a timeout if Rhonda doesn't line up this combo, get it lined up pretty close. This is this would be a big two points for her right now because if she gets those two, the worst thing's going to happen is a 13-7 and we'll have a tied ball game. Right now she's sitting at 16 Four actually, if she makes this, it'll be a fifteen-five. Timeout here being taken now by the Rack Masters. Looking at the two-nine combo, it looks like.
I definitely think that's the correct call. Make or not. It's going to be two valuable points. And nice. that's a shot. Nice shot. Follow through straight. Well, the rack masters don't use a lot of timeouts, uh -uh. but that one came in handy there. Two more points for Rhonda. Much to the delight of her teammates. This match is still in the grasp for her. Six dead balls in that rack. Star needs just three points. Rhonda needs eight. You're looking at your chart, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Again, every point matters here, especially when it comes to the team point split. The amount of points a team gets after each match based on the outcome of the match. Good break. Is she going to get some loving anywhere? No. No. Nope. Very solid break, though. Mm -hmm. Star back at the table needing just three points. <laughs> There's my prejudiced husband right there <laughs> saying hi to us. Keep the camera rolling after for Mike versus Ava. <laughs> 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 that probably would get some views, I'm thinking. Unfortunately, as soon as this match is over, we got to hand out some prize money and they'll be tearing this room down around us probably before we're out the door. True story. It's the way it goes here in Vegas. And we get to eat dinner, too, so there is that. Do we? I do. Oh, okay. I can, you know, can You're on the red eye tonight. Or some leftovers <laughs> or something. <laughs> Look at this. One, nice two. Nice job, yeah. Rhonda. Well done. You're taking the red eye out tonight, right? Huh? Is that like a midnight type flight for yes, you Yes, like an idiot I keep doing Overnight, it. Overnight, huh? I swear I'll never do it again. I do it every time. I'm here till tomorrow afternoon. Can't do the red eyes. Star's going to use the bridge here on this one. All right. What is it? Two more she needs? Two more big points. One is very ava available. Might as well just take this one now. That three ball is not much of a chance. Just focus on making this two now and get on the hill. Will we see Mike one more time in this match? No timeout, huh? Yep, here he comes. <laughs> here he comes. <laughs> and I would like to point out, too, this is so funny to me. Uh, the two is definitely a two. Not sure about the three. Oh yes, geez. the three is a three. <laughs> <laughs> the three is a three. So there is that. Yeah. This is not one of those where we let the um, whoever kind of decide what somebody is. Everybody here is fairly handicapped. Some handle the pressure better than others. Some make balls fearlessly. Sometimes they go, how's that guy possibly a six when he missed <coughs> two balls in a row? But still a six. Oh, not firm enough. That's ball in hand there. Nothing hit a cushion. What to do, what to do. Three into the oh, four. Oh, she was trying to make the bi yeah. play the billiard. Nice try there. Rhonda's a couple of points away from even if she loses from a... Right now it's a 15-5. She needs to make a couple more. Keep it at 14-6.
Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd, I love the crowd. They're really Crowds into really this. really come alive in I this know match, it. you know. Chance for some points for Ronda. There's one. Yep, there's one. Can she make this one? This is big for the team. Big, big, big shot. Keep track of the cue ball. Oh, overcut it. And this is what Star has left. Only one ball missing for her to take the second match. And I believe a 15 5 win. Oh, <laughs> snuck it in there. Gutsy performance there for Star Goris. Her team needed her, and she stepped up. Wins that match. That means it's a 28. No, 22. Oh, this is a close match. 22-18. 22-18 in favor of Left Live. Left Live. They Lep just Lep took the lead. Takes a small lead. So we get ready for the third match. We're going to take a quick break. Hear a word from our friends at PoolDog.com. The sport of pool has a lot of history, and traditionally the equipment has remained consistent over much of that history. But more recently, the sport has seen some modifications to one of its most visible pieces of playing equipment, the object balls. So we decided to dive into this evolution to better understand the driving force behind these changes and to examine how it's impacted players and fans alike. My search for answers started with our good friends at Aramith the world's premier billiard ball manufacturer. Their pool balls are used by players around the globe at some of the biggest and best tournaments the sport has to offer. According to Aramith, the object balls have traditionally displayed the following color code. While this color scheme provides the best contrast between balls, that was not necessarily the case for video and television production as dark blue, dark purple, and maroon can all be difficult to distinguish, especially under challenging lighting conditions. As more and more professional pool tournaments started appearing on TV, a change was needed. So Aramith created the Super Aramith Pro TV set, which features a pink four and 12 ball instead of the traditional dark purple. The seven and 15 balls were also modified to feature a light brown color instead of maroon. The change drastically improved the contrast for television viewers, according to Aramith. But the color evolution did not stop there. More recently, at the request of Matchroom Sport, producers of the Moscone Cup and several other professional pool tournaments, Aramith went back to the drawing board to help meet the need of viewers on mobile devices to better differentiate ball colors on smaller screens. With that, the Aramith Tournament Black Set was born. Aramith developed a light purple five ball to replace the traditional orange five ball and used a light purple stripe on the 13 ball rather than the normal orange stripe. A lighter green ball replaced the darker green on both. All right, we are back here at Pool Dog Arena continuing coverage of the APA Nine Ball Championship. Jason O'Hara from the Lep Life at the table with the break. Jason is a skill level five, which means he's gonna need 38 points to win this match. His opponent, Alicia Smith, skill level four, is going to need 31 points. Now 
Nice safety there. Completely behind the six ball. I'll bring Alicia up to the table for the first time in this match. Starting out with a kick shot, so she's hoping it's going to get better from there. Brings Jason back to the table. Again, Jason is a skill level five. And he needs to put some juice on this one ball to be able to get up for the two. Sitting center, he's trying to go two or three rails around. That was a tall order with a four ball being where it was, but at least it does have a shot at the two ball. It's going to have to be a shot maker here. Be nice if he could make it, come back, and back up again. But here's Mike. <laughs> Boss man's timeout. coming up. Hold on a minute. Let's talk about this. <clears throat> Early and often with the timeouts. Do you have to wonder how that affects the shooter sometimes, though? You know? It, yeah, everybody reacts differently. Yeah. But I would not want to be on a team where you have somebody saying, I, you know, you can't call timeout on me because it's, you know, sometimes it's necessary. But then sometimes they take too many times mm -hmm. outs, too. But they put doubt in the player's mind. All right. He he overrode the idea of shooting that, cutting that two ball in. It's a good move and a nice touch speed wise. So everybody's different. You know, some people know, no, nope, I don't want to talk about it. But when somebody has a shot, you know, just a shot that you, you know what you're going to do, Let, let's say a nine ball, but it's tough. Sometimes... You need to leave them alone and just don't, you know, get them to start doubting their decision and not feeling comfortable with it. Because, again, if you don't stroke the ball nice and solid with authority, then chances are you're going to miss it. Lep Life with a 22 to 18 point lead in the match. This is the third match now here in the Nine Ball World Championship. A little bit of a slow start to this third match as these players kind of get used to the environment a little bit. The lights, the table, the audience. Yeah, it, it takes a minute. It takes a hot minute, yeah. I mean, it's not like you just you play, what, seven, eight matches in a row there if you're undefeated, close to it. In the other room, you got all that noise. Everybody's doing their own thing. Music's pretty loud. Only your friends are sitting there watching. You might be streaming it. And then you all of a sudden step in to the semifinals, which is another part of this room, but still not here in the pit with all the attention and very easy to become self-conscious and lose your confidence a little bit here stepping into this arena because it is as much like a professional arena as you can get and uh, I know we talked to everybody after the match and they're all there saying I had no idea I could get this nervous yeah I was kind of looking over their matches played Alicia's played seven matches Ava but it does not look like she played in the semi-final from what I can tell okay Jason did play in the semifinal today. So okay. keep an eye on that. I'm not saying it's going to be a big difference maker, but it could. One of them has played here today. 
One is playing for the first time today. And like you said, the semifinal area of Pool Dog Arena is a little bit different. It's the other side of the room, but it is a, it's certainly a step up from the main room, right? Definitely. Helps you transition a little bit maybe to the, yes. to the final <laughs> Something arena. Something different, yeah. exactly. See if Alicia can get going here. The beauty of the shot is if she can just stay down and pocket this three, she's going to have some kind of a shot here on the four, either in the corner or the side pocket. And that'll be a chance at her first point. Oh, Got she it. banked it in. <laughs> she just shook her right. head saying, okay, all right, loosen up, girl. Yep. What am I doing here? Just, it's okay, Alicia. It's going to take you a little bit to get this into this match. All right, that had to be a real thin hit. Instead, she has left a great opportunity here for Jason to make the four. It looks like the five, then more than likely the six, nine combo, unless he goes into him now. He's got a good angle to go into them now. Oh, look out. That was a risky shot. This table play, it rolls fast. And he got too far. He can see the six, but he cannot make it. So just nice little defense here. Love to get behind this eight. Did he play perfect speed? Almost. Alicia, she could play a billiard here, hitting this side of the six and coming down. Sorry, that was not a very good drawing, was it? <laughs> this way, to make the nine ball down there that's the best opportunity she has just hitting a bit less than a quarter of the six ball just a little too full was all uh oh wait a minute now <laughs> not a bad leave though jason no. well we saw in the first match it took her teammate Josh a little while to get comfortable and mm -hmm. it was kind of a grind early on and in the end he pulled it out so still a good amount of time in this match this 31 to 38 race It's a great camera work there. You can see she just almost straight in, but oh, wow, she played mm, it as straight mm, in. Mm. Okay, shake it off, girl. Can't let that fester. Got to remember, that was the last shot that happened. Look forward to your next one, but it does look like Jason has going to pick up a couple of points, actually three points here for his team. Eight in the corner. Overcut it. He overcut it. And he hit the. He overcut it less than he did on the last shot he had that was similar. So maybe next time it'll be right in the heart of the pocket. But I know that Alicia says thank you very much. Just being able to get back to the table here is a a big deal. Especially if she can make this, that would be a pretty important shot for her. Nice, yep. big two points there, there at the end of the rack. And we'll have the break. Nice job there by Alicia to kind of salvage that. Yeah, she needed that for her confidence and everything else. A chance back at the table there after making that mistake and scratching earlier. You see the Lep Life team 
looking on. Here in Pool Dog Arena, home of all of our APA championships in Las Vegas. Shout out to the West da the Gate, too. I have to add that. They have been so great. They always are. But I mean, you know, you have like 20,000 people coming in here. <laughs> the bar gets filled up pretty quickly. And then all the uh, help with set up and everything else, the hotel rooms worked out well this year. And so thank you to them. No balls on the break, but didn't leave much for Jason to step into here. Let's see if he's going to try to make that seven. Yep. Watch out, though. Got a point, but sometimes that's a costly point because now if he doesn't hit this one ball, it could very easily be one, two, or even three points for his opponent. Sometimes one point is not good because the way he had to hit that seven, the cue, you knew the cue ball was going to stay down. Got a little unfortunate for it to sneak behind the two. Time out here now for Lep Life. And you see a timer there. It's a one minute max timeout. There's no real shot clock on the players at this point in the finals, but timeout, there's still a one minute timeout. Mike, <laughs> Mike was going for the to get the timer off the table, but Jason didn't want to wait. No. He said, I'm ready to shoot. <coughs> Ball in hand situation here. These two teams are Rack Masters are from Florence, Kentucky. And Lep Life, hashtag Lep Life is from Philadelphia, Philly. Pennsylvania. One in the side there. I guess we should, you know, it, it really is hashtag left life, not hashtag just Hashtag left yeah. life, yeah. yeah. Two in the corner. Here it goes, 3-9 combo. Holy Beautiful. smokes. Watch out. Watch out, cue ball. No, it's Watch not going to scratch. That was a fantastic talk about hitting a ball with authority. I like that. All right. I think she's settled in nicely now. All for that, I've been retired a little too long. I don't even know if I, it exists. And as far as APA ranking, I have never been able to play APA because by the time I came <laughs> over to the States, yeah, I came over before the APA existed, but um, started playing pro right away. So I've not been able to play in the APA. Don't even try it, lady. <laughs> no, but you're around a lot of APA as a league operator. Oh, absolutely. you got a lot of APA in your life. 13 years worth now, Crazy. Jason. Isn't that something? Scratch in the side. Big, big ball in hand here. Three easily attainable balls to be made. The one ball, the two, the three, four could become a little bit of an issue, but any time can grab three balls for your on your side, it's a big deal. He didn't quite get far enough there. Now he's going to have to do something and move the cue ball around to get on the three. Watch out. Nope. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> That'll work. Whatever gets you there. Yeah, huh? I like it. Both of these guys are not afraid to fire at him. Oh, here comes Mike. <laughs> You know, somebody pointed this out in the chat, and I hate to say it, but I've noticed it as well, is several of these timeouts that he's taken, the after effect has not necessarily been what I think him and the shooter had hoped for. Yeah. Whether that's been Jason, or even in the last match, there was a few times with Star where it just didn't work out so well. No, and sometimes it's just... He steps up when it's a really tough situation and it yeah. has to be p pretty precise. Sometimes, you, you know, you have coaches that just don't connect with certain players. Like I have some teams that I know of um, in our area where the nine does not give timeouts to two players on the team. Mm. Everybody else, but then they have a five given the timeout so they can connect more. Yeah, and, um, that makes sense. Yeah. And sometimes you have nines talking over the head of somebody who is a lower skill level mm -hmm. player that may not be able to be as confident to do what he asked them to do. So, And sometimes you just hit it like crap, Jason. Well, <laughs> I yeah, to tell you, you know, I mean, in fairness, he's he's likely taking a timeout in a situation that's very yeah. difficult. And so, How about that? No, Nobody making it, giving a timeout could have given a better <laughs> tip than that. <laughs> that cue ball just landed right on the seven. Let's see if he can avoid hitting the... Yeah, he can kick at it. In the side pocket, people. How about them apples? He deserved more than that, though. He's jacked up over this nine. Not only tough to make this five, but hard to hit it firm enough to get position on the six, but he'll take it. Richard said, I cannot give my wife a timeout. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. That's I probably hear that somewhat a lot. common. Oh, a little lucky there. A lot lucky, I might say. She does. Maybe she'll have to do the same thing here and just try to fire that four ball in. It worked for Jason. Alicia said, well, maybe I can do it. She's looking to go the other way. That's a tougher kick shot, I would say. Anytime you kick the ball into the short rail like that, that close, a lot of time you get kind of those bends on the cue ball. So I would prefer to see her shooting if I was the coach, I would ask her to shoot the other direction. Another timeout, this time by the Rack Masters. I've not seen them take a lot of timeouts. Mm -mm. And it's interesting. I think we've only maybe seen one other timeout, and I feel like it was somebody else that came out and did the coaching. So okay, maybe like you said, maybe they use different people for coaching the different players. Alicia's husband is on the team. Not sure if that's him or that the player that did the, the player that did the first coach, and maybe because I don't see him in the arena, maybe that's his. Nice shot. She did not get rewarded as much as Jason did on his kick shot, though, but or in his shot, his last shot. But I think that was Leroy there. I caught the last name Smith on his shirt. Oh, so. did you? Okay, that's a husband coaching a wife. Look at that. Just oh, wow. Enough. He knew he had it hit it softly, but needed one more turn of the five ball there. Five ball in the corner. Just a nice, nice little tap here. Very easily, easy to hit this too firm. Table is fast, and she can't hit down to kind of hit a center ball here. So she's going to have to float it down. Really keep your head down on these long straight in shots. Trust it. Oh, she hit that eight ball. That was perfect. A little more of an angle than she wanted, but at least made that six. Picked up another point. 
11-9 now in a 38-31 race. Nice. Watch she's going to avoid it. Yeah, she's okay. Thin cut here, boy. I don't like that she is jacking up. She more of a level cue. This is very easy for this to become too thick of a hit when you jack up and hit down on it like that. But she did it just fine. And a good speed. It turned out to be an okay shot here on the nine. The side pockets are pretty tight on these tables. So everybody knows the play. I've played out here. So she's going to just have to keep her head straight. Keep her head down. I just trust it. Oh. All right, not a bad outcome. If you're going to miss it, that's not a bad place to leave it. Defensive shot there mm -hmm. for Jason. It's 50 50 here again on a. She may go ahead and shoot this in a corner. The corners are more friendly and accepting of balls going in than the side, and the angle she has into the side is not easy. The problem with shooting it in the corner, if you do miss it, more than likely it's going to be kind of a sellout. It's going to leave the nine ball there. If you miss it in the side, she should be able to get the f safety out of it. But it looks like she is shooting it. Ooh, kind of in between there, huh? All right, big break here for Jason. Two valuable points to mm -hmm. take the lead going into this next rack. 13-11 in favor of Jason. He needs 38 points. He will have the break once again. If you are just joining us, you're watching coverage of the APA Nine Ball World Championship. The grand finale to this year's APA World Championships. Pool Dog Arena, Las Vegas. $20,000 on the line in this match. Not too shabby, huh, Jason? It's going to be a good day for both these teams one you way bet. or another. And I, and I know the, the team that doesn't come out ahead in this will be disappointed, but they still are going to take home $10,000 and uh, great memory mm -hmm. of a, a fantastic run. So... You see that even the last place team does get 350. Yeah, as soon as they show up, right? They get the 350. This being an Powerful amateur break. tour, we do like to spread the mon money around as much mm -hmm. as we can. This is not a pro tournament where 25, 30, 40, even 50% of the prize money goes to the winning team. You will notice, though, the nine ball prize payout did yeah. increase 5,000. And the eight ball, too. Yeah. April 2, 5,000. 5,000, yeah, both. Trying to keep up with inflation, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> well, one wow, in the corner. look at that shot and that two ball developing right there. That was pretty sweet. Just a nice little tap here. Should be able to play the three in the other corner. Too many... Wheaties this morning for breakfast, Mr. O'Hara. Got a little too far. That was a nice shot on that three ball, and he got reward, rewarded with a four coming out, just nice. 
Nice little tap in shot here. Hmm. All right, fine. We'll shoot it in that pocket. Look at that. Nearly dropped the eight in the side to boot. Now shooting on the seven, Jason O'Hara. Drops the seven in the corner, turns his attention to the eight in the side pocket. It's a big rack so far for Jason and team. Hashtag Lep Life. Nice. Ooh, perfect. Big rack for this Huge. team right here. That's a big swing there here in the pool dog arena. Jason O'Hara now at 23 points. He is 15 away from victory for the Lep Life out of Philadelphia. Philly. You probably spent some time up in Philly. Philly at one point or another, right? Yes, and I was just in Philly about a oh, month ago. That's right. And went on vacation and hit Philly trip. on the way around our little East Coast American vacation. But yeah, we've had some tournaments in Philadelphia for sure. Not too far from Valley Forge. Mm hmm. Home of the Super Billiard Expo. Has the Super Billiard Expo come back? I don't know if they did that. Yes. Since it has come back yep. since the pandemic. Okay. Yeah. Jason O'Hara with the break. The seven in the corner. Nice solid break. Two balls open, but he's going to be running into the six here more than likely. So if he, sure he's going offensively. And if you're going to miss that, you miss it on the pro side, which means you overcut it and leave nothing. You undercut it and it's a sellout. But in this case, I have a feeling that Rackmasters Alicia Smith is going to be playing defense here. I just try to play the speed to have the one ball go two rails down to the other side of the table. Cue ball is going to go. Cue ball would come this way. If she can play the one ball this way and come down. Just play the speed for it to get to the other side of the table on the rail. That's a good shot. Little love there. Get behind the nine would help a lot for her. No, I think he can hit the one, but that was a really good defensive shot with what she had to work with. Third match here in the nine ball world championship. Third of a potential five, depending on how things progress. <coughs> that turned out to be a pretty good safe there, Jason. Look out, oh, that was a bad hit. Ball in hand there. One ball did fall on the side. So that'll be a dead ball. She'll be shooting on the two. That was not all bad for Alicia. She can, if she shoots straight in on this two-five combo, the two should stay right there. Three and four down on that side of the table, six in front of the pocket. So this is... Cautious cue ball control here. She is a skill level four, so that doesn't necessarily mean that she has. Oh, what it that wasn't. Yeah, she still can make this two. 
A little trickier getting on the three, but one ball at a time at this point. Gotta grab the bridge. Nicely done to pocket the two with said bridge. Mm -hmm. Good shot at the three here. See if she can go run rail across and get on the four. If she has enough angle, that would be a natural position. Yep. Nothing better with them when you end up on the correct side of the ball <laughs> and it just naturally <laughs> feeds into the next ball. You know what I mean? A lot of times that's how you see a skill level two run or three run several balls because they it just happens to be that the balls are just, you know, the cue ball just kind of starts on the correct side. You just make a ball, you end up straight on the other one and so on. Perfect. Really a nice little run here by Alicia. Yeah. yeah. She hasn't had to do anything major. She's just pocketing balls. Same thing here. She hits it firm enough that cue ball's going to come around two or three rails. Or she could just tap it in. Eight in the side. Both these players now 14 points away from victory, I believe. All right, that didn't end up as well as the s previous shots in this rack, but still a makeable nine. Tough nine, but makeable nine. This would be a big two points with the break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How'd Got you hit it. it, girl? Got it. <laughs> Way little to finish that little head whip out. on that one. She the crowd loves there. it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. She's starting to feel it. And again, she will have the break. She needs just 12 points to Jason's 14. This has been a great match yeah, so far. Yeah, it really Ava. has. They've kind of taken and forth, turns to explode. And forth, and yeah. A lot of great shot making. We saw it in the last match, too between Star and, um, Rhonda, and Rhonda yeah. when they were playing. Big thanks to our sponsors, Action Cues, Aramith Billiard Balls, and the folks at PoolDog.com for all of their support. Frank hanging out here in Pool Dog Arena. Anxiously waiting to see who you're newest champions will be. There's a nice break. She Nothing, just, though. Yeah, she's had some solid breaks. Just can't seem to pocket any balls on the break. No, that's when it's time to move the cue ball maybe to the other side of the table, moving it around until you make a ball. The table is always going to rack similarly every time, so if you're not making a ball from where you usually break from, move it to the other side. Mm. And instead, Jason is back at the table again. Oh, made that one, but snookered himself on this five ball. I mean, that two ball. Did I say five ball? I did, didn't I? Happens. Yeah. You know, it's the sixth day of doing this. Nice hit. Is he going to get something for it? Well, let's we'll see what Anisha is going to come up with. You could just touch the two ball here, sending the cue ball down this way. You got the three and the four to hide behind there. It would be interesting to see if she just, the other option, she could come down this way. It would be interesting to see if they're going to take a timeout here. I think the, a lot of times the coach will just sit and wait to see what she decides, and if he or she doesn't like it, they'll come out and do a timeout. And there you go. Yeah. Coach wants to talk it over. In this case, what we believe is Leroy Smith, husband of Alicia. 
I was talking to the Rack Masters before the match. Kind of a family affair for this team. Oh, Mentioned yeah. Craig Hodge, Rhonda, his wife, Gregory Hodge, their son, who's not here. And you've got Alicia and Leroy. And to my understanding, the rest of the team is somehow related to one of the other of those two families. So Family time. Not uncommon. We see that quite a bit out here. Yeah. That's one of the great things about APA. Do it with your favorite peeps. All right. Just got a little too far there. Chose the uh, the farther defense, the first option. See here what? Oh, Ooh. baby, that was dead. Wow. <laughs> I didn't even see that was dead until he right right when he was getting ready to shoot it. I went, holy smokes! And he f didn't just make one; he made both the two and the nine as a backup there. So three points with one shot there for Jason O'Hara. All smiles after that one. Six dead balls on the table in that rack. Jason will have the break once again. Jason now 10 points away. Alicia is 12 points away. It's a very close match still. Again, 10 points available on each rack. Each ball worth one point. The nine ball worth two points. And you saw hashtag left life sitting there kind of chewing her nails, discussing. Ooh, oh, that, was, on the that break. was the whole team lineup sitting on the slide lines there. And ball in hand for Alicia. I think he pocketed what was the, the eight ball there. So the eight ball is off the table. One less point available now in this rack. Chosen to play this all the way down. See if she can come out a little bit for the. Oh boy. Normally, you always want to play it in the pocket that is the ball is closest to. And it's going to increase your odds unless you have to do something with position, of course. Everybody asking, what is Lep Life? That is the. Team name tied to the Crazy Leprechaun, the location this team plays out of back in Philadelphia. Team captain Mike Quinn is the proprietor there. Sounds like a fun place. Maybe next time we're in Philly, we'll check out the Crazy Leprechaun. Absolutely. I'm guessing it's Irish. Seen a lot of four leaf clovers and things in the comments. Mm -hmm. We have a few keep. Keyboard Cowboys here that apparently have never played at this kind of a stage. In a championship like this, this is not like playing in your MVP tournament back home or a local pool room tournament. This feels very different out there. You can talk to any of our ones to skill level nines and they will tell you the exact same thing. There's a lot of pressure out here and it's very nerve wracking. It's interesting, you know, some people take to it very well or very calm. We saw Absolutely. We saw some players like that in the uh team captain championship last night. Was her name Ginger? You remember? Oh Beattie? Ginger beat the six, she was yeah. skill level five, beat that <coughs> six, and she looked cool as a one, cucumber. One rack for the match, and yes she did. She said she wasn't, but she sure <laughs> played the part. There's the two in the corner. Mm. 
right behind the four, unfortunately. Good hit. Nearly pocketed that three in the corner. It paid off a little bit too, Jason. I don't think he can make this three ball, so a little bit fortunate there. Time out the here. Well deserved. Yeah. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen a timeout for the Lep Life. Mike Saleh talking it over with his teammate, Jason O'Hara. No sudden death in the finals, Tina. We let these teams play it out. Like we have talked about so many times before, there's enough pressure put on these guys. Most of these players don't play in a ton of major tournaments. They have regular jobs. This is an amateur league. And like I said, until you're in that pit down there in the pool dog championship arena you don't know what nerves are and it's al already a lot of nerves earlier in the tournament just playing for your team like you guys do week in and week out so um, some some live up to it and some have a hard time with it and even if you're just a pro then you play the same all the time mentally some matches you're really on and others you just can't get into it and you don't play as well so nobody is a machine Rarely, if you have 10 matches, does a five play exactly like a five. And you guys get to see these guys one time under all this pressure. So the whole thing of he ain't this and she ain't that, and you know, it, it, it's <laughs> just getting to where it's silly. It's a little embarrassing, Ooh. actually, to be honest. I'm not sure if everybody realizes the great degree APA goes through to ensure handicaps yes. are what they should be, particularly here at the event, but it starts long before that. You know, right. you've got a group of people, a handicap review committee that reviews the score sheets of all these teams they know are coming out. They evaluate their scores. They literally lock themselves in a room for, I don't know, a week or so. And then once you get here, they're reviewing every round of the teams that are winning and seeing how the scores are coming mm -hmm. in. You've got the observers here watching matches when they think there might be an issue. So I know we had at least one disqualification in the eight ball event. Mm -hmm. Might have had another. I, I, I know we just, I know we definitely had one. And uh, again, nobody likes when that happens. Nobody wants to be the person that's got to tell a team you've been disqualified. But at the same time, it wouldn't be fair to the other, you know, 2,500 no, teams not. out here to, to not deal with it. And all teams are aware of it yeah. at the beginning. They all have a chance to certify themselves higher if they feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been practicing for the last two months like crazy. I know Bob on our team, you know, I know he's been playing like a four lately. So, yeah, I mean everybody has, has the every opportunity to prepare for that eventuality. So... I'm with you, Brandon. I think they're both playing amazing. All right, nice little billiard here, I think. No, the, I don't know if it's possible because the five ball is frozen. But you could hit half the right s half of the five. It should still bring, even if it's a double hit, should double kiss, should bring that cue ball over to the six. I have a feeling that we'll see Leroy again coming out. Yeah, he's going to take a timeout. That means Mike Soleil is going to come out and just give some words of encouragement to his teammate as well. That's always allowed during the timeouts. One team takes a timeout. The other team can confer with their player as well. While we've got a minute, I want to give a shout out to the folks behind the scenes making these streams possible. Kara Price, our media production manager. 
We're running the show here behind the scenes. Josh Fletcher, great camera work. Keegan Mills, Casey Jones, and Dalton Owenby. Of course, Bill Tuff's a big part of the creation of this room, mm -hmm. our director of tournament production. So it takes a lot of people to do what we do, and I just want to make sure we give credit where credit is due for some of the folks who you're not necessarily going to see on the stream but are very much responsible for making sure it happens and happens as well as possible. Jason O'Hara inching ever closer to a win in this third match. Let's tap this in. He's going to go straight out. Nice position on the nine there. Jason now three right. points away from winning this third match. which would extend his team's lead as well in the overall match. He will have the break. Right now it's 22 to 18 overall, I believe. Favorite of the team on your right, which is hashtag LepLife. So this would be a pretty big win. Alicia has done a good job. She's the skill level four. Which means she's racing. She's 10 balls short. So at this point, if she just gets one more, that would be very helpful for her team and avoid a 15-5 loss if she were to lose. She gets one more point on her side, and that would be a 14-6 instead of 15-5. So every point is important for the overall win. Do what you can for your team. It's not all about winning or losing, obviously, but getting those points on your side is huge. Nice powerful break there by Jason and then he does have an open shot on the one, once close to the pocket. Two points away. <coughs> Just come straight out anywhere at this point. Every ball is important. Shot is tough enough as it is, and mm. still one point away. Yeah, definitely. This would be, like you said, a 15-5 split if he pockets this two. They're going to call a timeout. Should also mention the crew at the Westgate, the AV team here, helping us make everything in this arena mm -hmm. really throughout the tournament possible. But again, you see their expertise on display here in Pool Dog Arena. Fantastic job by them as well. All right, opening here to at least possibly grab a couple. This would be the difference between a 15-5 and a 14-6 split if she can get one more point. Yeah, this is big. Just make sure. If I, know she don't, I don't know that she's paying attention. I'm sure she's not. But if I was the team, I'd go, okay, just make sure you make this, whatever happens. And she did. Nice. Big deal there. Potentially, when we get to where we're tallying all the points up l at the end of the match. The next number to watch for her would be 25. Mm -hmm. Right now they're looking at a 14-6 split, assuming Jason finishes Ooh, off. Nice, nice shot. shot. She had nowhere to go with this four ball, but again, with the one point, the point for Matt, every ball counts. And she can still win this. You know, we could keep talking about if she loses this, if she loses that, but you never know what's going to happen. She's very much still in this match. Hey, honey, can you come here and let me talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's this Alicia Smith and Leroy Smith, Mr. Smith is coming out to... Mr. and Mrs. Smith. She says, I put myself in a jam here. Can you help me out? Get me out of this? It's tough because she can't get where she wants to go here on that side of the six. I don't believe her unless she hits him with a little bit of, oh, yes, she can. I didn't think she could. Just a nice little touch shot. Oh, no. Caught the six ball. <gasps> ball in hand to Jason and an opportunity to close this match out. It'll that could be a 14-6 split. And there it is. Jason right. O'Hara takes that match 38 to 23. 14 6 split. We got 36 22. I can't come. What are you talking about? Say again? 36 22, right? Okay. You count faster than I do, apparently. Well, we're at 18, right? We got 6. 24, I'm sorry. 36. 36, 24. Yes. Whew. <laughs> the arithmetic. 36, Difficult 24. Difficult for us marketing folks. <laughs> Crack <coughs> Masters has two matches left here. They need to start inching in. They're down by 12 points going into the fourth match. Very much doable. But they can't take a big hit here. Need to have something happen. And we're going to be interesting to see who they got coming up. All right. Well, we've got a minute. Let's hear a word from our friends at PoolDog.com. J, Jeremy Jones, Team USA Moscone captain. What a way to start off this year's US Amateur Championship. We've got Rachel Lang. Rachel is undefeated from Catskill, New York, taking on Stacy Borbeau, a former US Amateur champion. Down to just the eight ball here. There we go. Fires it in. Yeah. There you have it, folks. Hello, I'm Stacy Borbo, and I am the 2022 US Women's Amateur Champion.
Well, that was a powerful break there by I. Sue Watts, who represents hashtag Lep Life. Didn't get much for it, but he uh, made two balls on the break here. See if he goes defensive or he kind of try to slice this one ball in. Super thin hit. No, oh, that didn't work. He is, by the way, skill level four, and he is up against Greg Hodge, who is the captain for Rackmasters, and he's a skill level five, and he's stepping to the table. Rackmasters down 36-24. They need to really get something on the board here, so they are counting on Greg Hodge to get that done. Ball in hand. Trying to find a good path to get on this three ball. Two was made on the break. Well, he wants that to slow down. It, it, it did. He's got a good shot on the three. Just come out anywhere here in the center of the table. If he's not comfortable making it, it's an automatic defensive shot and just tapping it and hide behind the nine if he doesn't like it, but I don't know why he would. Oh, came up short. Came up short. You can go two cushions down, or you can just go straight across. Straight across is tougher. You always try, if you can, to hit the, the ball, the last rail. Whether you hit it one rail, two rails, or three, hit the last rail that is the closest to the ball. That's the easiest way to judge it. It's always tough to judge it when you have all that distance between the last cushion you're hitting and the object ball. is Ayasu, Ayasu Watts. They call him Watts. Yeah. So we may call him Watts here as well. Ayasu, Ayasu, or Watts. We'll go with Watts. Ayasu Watts. <coughs> so we got Watts and Hodge going at it there. Watts needs 31 to Hodge's 38. And anything 14 and above is going to be a victory overall if Mr. Watts wins this match. That would put them at 50 and, <coughs> excuse me, in three uh, matches won. Three win, right. Timeout complete. Mr. Watts ready to shoot. Playing low here to try to bring the cue ball back up for the eight. Nice. But he hit it <laughs> while he went after. Oh, look nice. at that little love nudge he got. That didn't hurt any at all. Got perfect on this eight ball. See if he can get straight enough on this eight. I mean, that nine ball, and he did. Nice shot. Just tap it in there. All right, turned out to be a good timeout that time. And I see Watts, he did a good job of finishing that rack. Got a couple of little rolls there, but he did what he had to do. Showed a lot of heart there and not quite as nervous as some of the players have been this week. He looks a little bit more comfortable. But don't count Greg Hodge out. He is ready to go. Ayasu Watts will have the break for the Lep Life. Who 
now lead this match 36 to 24 overall. As we inch closer to victory for one of these two teams, the final championship to be decided here in Pool Dog Arena at this year's World Championships. It's always, not, you know, kind of a sad feeling going home. You've made new friends out here and had mm -hmm. a good time, but then you realize I get to go home, so yeah. there is that. <laughs> it has been a long week for yeah. those of us who have been out there. Well, you've been out here longer than I have. I've been out here since August 2nd. And it's not the pool or the, the matches that make you tired. It's it's Vegas and the ding, ding, <laughs> ding, and the people everywhere and the casinos and the action. and the <laughs> There's very little rest. Yeah. No matter how much you sleep, there's very little rest. Great experience, though, for thousands of pool players who were able to come out here this year. That'll work. Nice shot. Nice, solid, as planned. Didn't get much of a reward for it as far as position, but good shot there on that kick combo. All right, left a very makeable one ball here. One ball at a time, but this is definitely makeable. Now, where's the cue ball going, though? Well, he missed that. Did he leave anything? Well, he left a good, good opportunity here for Greg Hodge, the captain of... Team Rack Masters. <laughs> One down. One down, 23 to go, right? All right. If he can make this three ball, natural position, just play speed to get across table and come out here for the four. Mm. Ooh. And he left a great opportunity here, and I do believe we're going to see Mike Sally come out because now he knows that there's a chance to do some damage here. Just kind of talk, watch through this. Not just being a skill level four, <coughs> wants to make sure that he kind of sees the opportunity to make more than one or two. About how important it is not to end up on the rail. Do you feel comfortable drawing it here? Do you want to follow it? I know Mike wants him, would love for him to draw it into the end rail and back out a little again, but if he feels more comfortable following it, that's fine. And again, you know the importance of just pocketing balls. You don't have to run out. There's the pe point system we're using in nine ball. You don't have to get all the way to the nine. Just get as many points on the board as you can, especially in the situation they're in, which means they don't need, they only need Kind of a 15, what is it, 15-5 <coughs> win? 14-6, we'll get it done. 14-6, we'll get it down, okay. I'd put them at 50 with three matches won. All right. That floated just perfectly out for the five ball. Either way, obviously, both of these teams are going to walk away with a nice paycheck. And nice trophies, I might add, and plaques for both teams. One a little bigger than the other one, though, huh, Jason? Yeah. Both Good in shot. terms of physical size as well as <laughs> emotional significance, I guess. But yes, both very nice trophies. Very unique trophies. 
Yeah, I like that globe. I love it. Appropriate for the World Championship, I think. Yeah, no, timeout does not have anything to do with the skill level. Hmm. That's the... Oh, watch out. Well. All right, some go in, some don't. Now, the only thing a timeout does sometimes is you can have a, th you know, a two perform more like a three because if you get enough timeouts, chances are that they're going to do things that they normally didn't see, didn't think of, get the ball in hand, play a defense, whatever it is. So, But the actual timeout mm -hmm. doesn't mean anything. Now, he undercut that quite a bit. And a great opportunity again. Eyes to Watts here, too. We'll see if he can get on this eight ball and get an angle to come down to the nine. If not, just pocket one at a time at this point. <laughs> Rattled a little bit, but it yeah. dropped. He hit some firm. That came out nice. He doesn't hit too many shots softly. I've noticed that about Watts. <laughs> he hits some with authority. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. So decides to go defense over offense there. Leaving Greg Hodge on the rail. Good shot. Very good shot. Two points there for Mr. Hodge. At the That's end of that rack and the break. That's a must make there. Another great look here at Pool Dog Arena. Kind of the last space still standing here at the West Gate of the World Championships. I took a moment in between the matches to use the restroom and noticed everything's pretty much torn down out there. Yeah, it's so it it's goes amazing. Bye bye, pretty quick. Went to bed last night. It was packed. There was people everywhere. <laughs> Got up this morning. Had breakfast. Where'd everybody go? And all of a sudden, it's empty. Yeah. I was going to buy some cool stuff, too, from the uh, all our vendors out here. It was kind of a smorgasbord of stuff, and I just never got to it. And by the time I got there this morning, they were all gone. Nice break. And nice layout, I might add. One ball does pass by the three. You can just kind of drift down here a little bit. I have a perfect angle on the two to get towards the three. Three ball is available right there in the side pocket, so... He can make this three ball. And the last time he had this shot, he overcut it. We'll see if he can just keep his head down here. There you go. Nice shot. Oh, almost made the nine, but neither one of them went, and a great chance again. Wide open. Don't have to do anything with the cue ball here for the next few balls. It's laying awfully pretty right now for Isu Watts. Just tap, tap, tap. Maybe even tap, tap after that. Oh, we let that cue ball go a little bit. Five balls makeable, but it made it a little tougher by running too far.
time out here. Something we have seen in virtually every rack for the LEP life. I has there been a rack where they didn't take a time no. out? No, he's uh, they're not gonna leave a time out behind. You don't That's bank them. No. Might as well use them. Nice shot. Watch out nice with the shot. cue ball. Again, Looks he hits right. every ball. You know, I'd rather see a four hitting the balls with authority than just babying everything. He just uh, overhits them a little bit, but I like the fact that he actually hits it like he means it. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> All right, not a bad try, but we're going to have Rackmaster's own captain, Greg Hodge, come to the table here, and he is running out of time. Even if Isu Watts makes just one or two here and there, he's at 16 already. Obviously, he has a way to ways to go. Being a skill level four, needs to get to 31, but... Mr. Hodge needs to get to 38, so long way to go, but we need to start putting some racks together, and he doesn't just need to win kind of on the hill. He needs to get some points here, considering that the team is down 36-24. Well, All starts right. with four points there. It's a good that start, rack. right? He will have the break in the next rack. I know we mentioned it earlier, but we'll mention it again. Fall session for APA leagues around the country. Just around the corner, in some cases, maybe have start just started up, but now is a great time to get involved. If you can imagine yourself here at Pool Dog Arena one day, it all starts by joining the league, getting on a team, and experiencing, you know, that APA camaraderie and that you'll find there locally. Great way to, you know, meet people, make friends, fall in love. Mm -hmm. I think I saw three couples out here that I, I saw. I don't know how many were total, but they were, were getting married out here at the APA pool tournament. There's a little chapel behind here. Well, even if you don't fall in love with a, somebody in the league, you fall in love with the game, right? Oh, yeah, so Absolutely. I've One way or another, you're going to find love. I've been married to this <laughs> game for a long time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mr. Hodge chipping away. Mm -hmm. As long as he doesn't end up behind that five ball. Oh, he made it. On the rail. Nothing's easy yet. Now tied at 16 points apiece, but again, Ayasu Watts, skill level four, needs only 31 to Greg's 38. Oh, that's a good shot there. Differential of seven points. One point per ball, two points for the nine ball. I want to put a little bit of right spin on this going into that seven. Oh, he ended up on the rail. So he got the first five points. The thing about this, though, is you get two for the nine, so he doesn't need to be splitting wrecks with Mr. Watts at this point. But I don't know what else he can do here making the six ball. There's really no way to getting on the seven. 
to where you can make the seven, I don't believe. We'll see what he's going to do. Definitely need to pocket this if he's shooting at it. And we'll deal with the seven later. Content to pick up the point. Now with a four point lead, needs 18 to win this match. I think I would needs 15. This spot here, I would, I would definitely look to go behind the seven. It's a very risky shot. So just kind of hit, find your spot, and hit and stick right here. If you get a full hit, it will stick right there and send the seven ball up here. Heading directly into it, you're looking at potential scratch, and you're not going to get much for it. So just measure it out where you're going to hit as solid of a hit on that seven as possible. You may and even end up snookering the other team, the other player. Somebody asking, how many balls does Greg need to get to to force a fifth match? Let's see if we can figure that out. 30 or 31. Thank you, Kara. Well, it got too thin of a hit there. But that's still better than going the other side. So timeout well taken. He's got to get to at least 30 points for a 13-7 split. Which would force a fifth match, although there wouldn't be a whole lot of work to be done there for lap life, I don't think. It's never over. Till never it's over, over till it's over. But sometimes it's almost really over. <laughs> don't start. <laughs> no negative energy here. Somebody from Rackmasters might come up and smack you upside the head here. It's not over till it's not over. Not over till it's over. Fair enough. A little uphill. Grant you that. Okay, backwards cut here, but if correct speed, they should have a nice shot at the eight ball. He can make this four. He's going to size it up. Just one hit low, then he could end up scratching. He's queuing low. And he's lucky he hit it too thick. That would have definitely scratched the way he was queuing it. Another shot here. Two options. Either go 7-9 combo or you can play the 7 into the rail. Go off the 9. That makes it a really big pocket. You just have to hit it somewhere in this area right here. And it'll go off the 9 ball in the corner. Either or will work. That does Ooh. not work. That's the only thing. Got lucky, though. Some encouraging clapping and yelling there from Team Hashtag Lep Life. Greg Hodge of the Rack Masters at the table here. He might make both here. A shot at making both anyway. Yeah, <laughs> he made that nine at least. That'll nine. work. Another two points there for Mr. Hodge. Saw that shot come up earlier. The Rackmasters team. Looking on, cheering their teammate on. $20,000 on the line here in the nine ball. 
World Championship. Thanks to our sponsors, Action Cues, Aramith Billiard Balls, PoolDog.com. You know, the nice part about winning the championship of nine ball, which since that is the last event, at least they have a chance to go home with some of their money. <laughs> you know, they get paid in cash. It's hard to hold on to that if you're still here for two or three days after the <laughs> tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Best to leave right after you collect that cash. That's right. That's funny. Funny because it's very true. Mm -hmm. Dry break there. Brings Ayasu Watts back to the table. Good shot. Same tempo that he hits almost every ball, and I'd, you know, I'd rather see that than somebody just kind of poking that, you know, just rolling the cue ball up. He has hit every shot with authority. Sometimes it works out with position, sometimes not, but he doesn't hold back. There he goes again. Oh, got lucky there. This will be our last time in Vegas for quite a while, huh, Ava? I hope you yeah. got your fill. I did. <laughs> How about you? Oh, that's not hard enough. Is oh, it? Oh, just yes, hard it enough. is. Just hard enough. Nicely done. Yes, I think a week in Vegas, or eight days, or nine days, or whatever it was, I think <laughs> that is. But who's counting? The perfect Vegas trip is like three days. I mean, let's just be honest. Three or four, three four days. Three or four days. If you're playing, you know, the thing is, if you're playing in the tournament then it's a different story yes. because you're into the tournament. Yes. But once you get knocked out, then then, whew, then the, the days get long. <laughs> or for us who don't even get to play in the tournaments. But I go and watch all my teams every chance I get. I love, I love doing that. I love not only supporting them, but I get into it. I get as nervous as they do. And I only lost, only bit off two nails while <laughs> I was here. <laughs> How did your teams do out here? Any, anything they notable? Any they notable did good. finishes? A lot of, uh, I had two 65 or better finishes, but I had a lot of close matches just losing on the hill. You know, it's hard to get the, you got to get a little lucky. Everybody has to come together and oh. kind of take turns and win when you need to. Yeah. And But I think everybody had fun. How many teams did everybody you have I here? I talked to. Um, we had four, C five, six, seven, eight, nine. All together, 11, I think, between Masters and Jack and Jill and 8-Ball and 9-Ball. And That's a lot of folks. Yeah, so everybody I talked to said they had a, they had a really good time. So. so while we got a minute, I saw the craziest video today. Maybe some of our viewers have seen it, but hmm. it was of a player out here in Vegas for the tournament. I just saw it this morning. We had all that rain the other night two nights ago and like it was pouring out of some of the casinos <laughs> well this guy <laughs> there's video of one of our players i think he's from kansas if i'm not mistaken riding an inflatable like oh turtle through the flood water <laughs> all the way like around the corner and down <laughs> to the strip and it was like whoa First of all, we did pretty get a crazy hold of an inflatable I, turtle. I don't know, but I, I mean, <laughs> in, it was in the desert. I saw that this morning, and I was just in shock. <laughs> and I mean, I'm glad that person is okay because, you know, as funny as it was, also could be very dangerous <laughs> uh, with the floodwaters out here. So maybe you can find that one out on Facebook if you're lucky enough circulating. That was a I'll have to look quite a That's funny video, funny. but I'm. I would not encourage anyone else to try that. Though. No, you as need funny as I found it, I would car not encourage to come others. flying. You know, I just I would water. just worry about being swept away. I mean, that water well, it yeah. ends up somewhere, and it's generally in those tunnels that run below the city. Th that's not a place you want to. Absolutely end up. not. You know, typically when you 
get a lot of rain out here. There's always, you know, sometimes some people get swept away. Kids playing down in those tunnels and things, or folks, unfortunately, living sometimes down there. Yeah. Okay, this is a good. You hit this low enough, you're going to make the seven ball here. Hit the back side of the two. No, hit the top side. Hit the back side of the two, you got a good chance of making that combination, or it's almost automatic. Instead, we're going to have Greg come back to the table. Mm -mm. I'm not sure if he rushed that or what, but failed to pocket that two in the corner. Frustration there for Greg. Hmm. If he hits the left side here and just banks the two ball across long as he avoids double kiss cue ball is going to more likely be buried there but between oh she he didn't hit it firm enough did he oh yes that'll work <laughs> smart play well executed on a tricky situation here for greg hodges Hmm, he might be up now. But the only thing I see is a three rail kick. And that is a long shot already. You see overhead here, he might be able, yeah, that's what he's shooting. He might be able to do it two rails. Oh, the three rail kick. Let's it's see if he can get a rail. Oh, wow. No he ball, doesn't hit rail. that three ball and four ball in the table over there than he would have Gotten had it. Rail, that was a yeah. really good shot. Nice try for Mr. Hodge. But Ayasu Watts will take ball in hand here. He is 14 points away. Greg Hodge is 16 points away. Well, we've had some very evenly matched, you know, for mm -hmm. the most part, each each of these matches. They've been good matches. Close splits. Some great plays, some surprising misses, some, I mean, it's it's the perfect thing, some good s defensive shots, some unlucky or lucky shots. So far had it everything. It's resulted in close matches. Got a good chance here. If he's going to aim this, I'm sure Mike is coming. Well, no, he's not coming. So he's going in the corner? For real? Surprised there. Uh, I thought he might get a little lucky on in the that side. top corner. Yeah, I'm surprised there. See if Greg can get going here a little bit. Four in the corner. Looks like that eight ball is dead. Look out, cue ball. You don't want it on the rail. Picks up another point with that eight ball. Big point here, making this five ball. He's got a chance at a billiard. A combo on the six. I think the six might even go, but this is the shot right here. Hmm. Gonna get lucky. Yeah, that was a nice yes. little. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's one of those trick shot things that you learn how to do, or kick shots where you learn how to kick at two rails.
You just got to take it. Some Sometimes it goes your way, other times the yeah, opponent's way. But right now, Greg's just going, okay, next play. Oh, didn't hit that. Kind of came down on that a little bit, and it just died right there. Then cut for the win. And this rack. Oh, nice. baby. He really played Big good shot. there. Big two points nice. and the break. Well done. And that puts him, we'll get a score update here in a second. Is that eight points away now? I lost track. I was just watching Greg run those <laughs> on that rack. He played really well. 29 to 19. Yeah, needs to nine get to... Nine points, okay. Nine points. Are we sure about that 29? I was thinking it was 30 <laughs> with that last ball, but they're going to get a confirmation of the score. We've got the official scorekeeper out on the floor. Sure. The control booth and us are trying to keep track of it. Luckily, we have somebody to go to that's actually keeping track. Yes. Keeping track. Yes. <laughs> All right. Looks like the score is confirmed. 29-19. Greg score needs is correct. nine points. Ayasu needs 12. Very close in this match. Wow, Fires power break. That ball in. Is he going to get a shot here? Yes, yes, he is. Now eight points away. Did he get two balls? No. One ball in the break. I can't go for making this. I don't know. You see, if you make, can't make this in the corner, that means that if you make it in the side right here, cue ball is coming down this way problem with that is he can't do much about it because the cue ball is on the rail so he can't put anything on that and again making one ball is great but when you're a skill level five and a must win you may choose not to take any chances he gets snookered on the two ball they're in big trouble so he may just want to roll this up into the rail and follow put the cue ball behind the three eight that's what he decided to do. Nice shot. Well, well played. Smart play. Ayasu Watts back at the table. Asked for a timeout from his coach, Mike Saleh. Mike's going to help him to kind of measure out the kick shot here. A little bit surprised that they're going that direction as opposed to going two rails the other way. That one ball is large. But we'll see what happens here. If he can make contact with the one, that would be a big deal. Especially since he tends to hit the balls firm. No. Nope. Another opportunity now for Greg Hodge. Who, Ava, by getting to the 30-point mark, has ensured we will see a fifth match regardless of the outcome here. Oh, okay. But the win is what he really wants. Yes. To make it a close well, fifth match. He'd like match. to go to a fifth match yeah. where uh, his team has a... Yeah. Good chance at victory instead of needing a miracle. So see if he can finish this off. There are nine points on the table. He needs eight. Make that seven.
two oh, in wow, the corner. Slow me. down. Thought he would just come out just a little bit for the three, but he went to the other side of the table. We'll see where he's going to go from here. Four ball is kind of nestled in there with the five and eight. So as I peek at the skill le levels, Ava, of who's played for Rack Masters, if my numbers are correct, it looks like Leroy Smith looms in the fifth spot. Your skill, skill level, level seven, seven. For Rack Masters, correct. I'm sure that was going to be the situation. We've seen 10, 17. So... I'm guessing George Johnston a five, perhaps, for Lep Life in the fifth match. They'll be at 17. They've got two fives. The Mike Quinn, their captain, has not played a match here at the championships. So I would be surprised to see him play the fifth and decisive game in the championship final. But you never know, I you guess. Never you never know what's going to happen. All right, timeout's done. He could freely go for cutting this ball in. It doesn't have to worry about the cross side scratch because of where the eight is. Nice. nice. The eight, I was going to say, the cue ball will stop right on the eight if he makes the four. And now only needing four points. With five on the table. Yeah. He needs to cl if clears this rack. And we've got action going into the fifth match. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's a super-duper thin shot he would have to make here. Unless he goes for the bank. It looks like he's queuing for the bank. He sure is. Ayasu Watts now back to the table. Ayasu led early on in this match. Yeah. Craig's done a really good job of steadying the ship and mounting a comeback. Now three points away to Ayasu's 12. Hmm. Not quite, and not only that, but what a pretty little table here that Greg gets to step into. This is the dream layout if all you need are three more balls. Six in the corner goes, just two points needed. Oh, wow, this he overcut it. Oh, did he get <laughs> lucky there? Wow. And they've had their time out. If he hits it super, super soft, I think he, and, and on the far side, like overcuts it a little bit, he should be able to hit the point without scratching. You got to hit it really soft. I don't know, it's close. Super high, super soft. No, not I can't Oof. hit it with that. You can't hit that with that uh, Watts speed that he's been hitting everything with. You gotta baby slow roll it. And here it is. This is for the win. Best way you can hit it, ball in hand on the nine ball. Two points for the nine will get him to the 38. And a much needed win for their team. Well, you said it, Ava. Big win there for Greg Hodge. We're going to a fifth match here in the nine ball championships. We'll see what the point split is there. Ayasu stayed at 19. 
I believe he stayed at 19, yes. 15-5 split. Thirty nine forty one, are we right? Well that's pretty exciting, isn't Woo it now? Buddy. All right. Forty one so thirty nine, is that what you said? I think so. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll hear a word from our friends at pooldog.com. We're gonna come back with an updated score and ready for our fifth match. So come back and join us. Should be a good one. Jeremy Jones, Team USA Moscone captain. What a way to start off this year's US Amateur Championship. We've got Rachel Lang. Rachel is undefeated from Catskill, New York, taking on Stacy Bourbeau, a former US Amateur champion. Down to just the eight ball here. There we go. Fires it in. Yeah. There you have it, folks. Hello, I'm Stacy Bourbeau, and I am the 2022 US Women's Amateur Champion. Final match in this great event. We got an all Texas final, which I know suits you, Mr. Yeah, I'm Lone. pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lone Star. Uh, we've got Ernesto Bialwa, the 2011. All right, we're back here at Pool Dog Championship Arena, fifth and final match in the Nine Ball World Championships. Decisive fifth match, as we suspected. We've got Leroy Smith of the Rack Masters. You see him at the table now. He is a skill level seven. Pockets two balls on the break. He's going against George Johnston, skill level five. So we've got a 55-38 race in terms of points. And folks, this fifth match will decide your final champion here. Yeah, winner takes all here. You have to win the match to win the overall title. It's left a good combination opportunity here on the two. Well, if you've been with us since the beginning of this match, you're certainly getting your money's worth. Outstanding match to cap off this year's APA World Championships. Ouch. Not too much speed there. Oh, 
Well, not a bad result there, Jason. Not much here. Will he road to shoot at? And it looks like if he really slices it, he could make the three just focus on avoiding the scratch. That shouldn't be a problem. Just hitting low. A little oh, bit nice. of left coming Watch around, out. though. But uh oh. Ball. Scratch in the corner. Ball in hand to George Johnston. Told George goes by Sonny. I feel like everybody on the Philly team goes by something different than their name. I know. I know. <laughs> we see a lot of that. I know when we process paperwork in our league, you, you know, there's you never know them as the name that they are officially. Yeah. Everybody's got a nickname. Oh, George Sonny Johnston pockets the four in the corner. Oh, Emily Johnston is watching. She said, that's my dad. Oh. Let's see what Dad can do. Nice touch there. Did he get all the way to? Yes, Ooh. he sure did. Fed naturally in there. All he had to do was play nice speed, and he did. Left himself a little tough, a little bit of a tester here. This is the seventh match of the tournament for both of these players. Timeout here. Interesting time for a timeout, but. I think he just wants to make sure that he doesn't scratch here. If he hits, cuts this in and kind of hits center ball, it's going to be very close for the cue ball to go in and carry him right off. So I think, I think that's what it is. I think that Watts wants to look at it and just see. Do you need to hit it high, low, soft, hard for it not to scratch? I just want to reassure himself since he had a timeout left anyway. Might as well come and look at it. Oh, Ooh, and see. Wait a well, minute. Wait a, a minute. It picked it. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not quite. Oh. Not quite. <laughs> the right side of the room, they have all, they're all sitting behind their people. Whoever is rooting, it's kind of... Uh, you know, kind of the, the Philly people on one side. We've got the Kentucky and other fans on the other side going the other way. So yeah. it's kind of a fun thing to see. All right. Two more points there at the end of that rack for Leroy. Quick first rack there. All the pressure on these two. Leroy will have the break. It's really big, been a good match. What a way to finish our six days of broadcasting all yeah. the six championship. I mean, there's been other ones that have been super exciting and close, but for our final one of the week, and they got to go like the this, distance. Yeah, going the that's distance. pretty cool. Because, you know, it's all about us. We want to see close <laughs> matches. We don't care if they want to well, see close Well, when we matches. say <laughs> us, we mean us and the viewers. Everybody, We're part of, of the course. viewers. Anybody who's not playing the match, we want close matches. Nine ball moving. Yeah, he's hitting the balls firm, but, oh, that was the first time. But look, look at, at this. That. As much as, as hard as he hit those balls, what are the odds that all balls would end up in this quarter of the table? which is on the opposite side from where they racked even. But luckily for Leroy, he does have a shot on the one ball on the side. And if he can come out center table, oh, he played in the corner. Well, that hurt because that two ball was right there, stop shot, three ball was right there. I don't think he liked the side pocket shot as far as position, probably why he chose the corner, but what an opportunity to make some get some balls on his side here. We're just about four hours or so into this match. I think we got started maybe around one. I'm sorry, two fifteen. Just shy of four hours. 
No sudden death here in the championship final. George fires that ball in. Yeah, he looked a little confused there. He didn't mean to. He meant to kind of stop it right there, I believe. Look on his face. He hit a little bit too low. And drew the cue ball back more than he wanted to. Somebody asked about Sonny. Yes, he did go up to a five after the semifinal match. So as you look at the graphic that was created during the semis when he was a four, that would explain the... The difference there, nice he is shot. in fact a skill level five here in the championship. Leroy has his work cut out for him here, just making contact with this three ball. Needs to avoid giving ball in hand. He's looking at coming around this way for the three. Can he hit it? Oh, <laughs> he Just came the enough. back way. That'll work. He says, that'll work. Just enough to make it a good shot. Huge difference between leaving ball in hand there. And what looks like it's going to be a bank shot attempt here by Sonny. Almost. Just kind of dropped his shoulder on that shot. It's jacked up and just kind of came down on it, which is a very common mistake. Players of all skill levels, it's easy to do. And Sonny now has a chance at this, and then there's a 4-7 combo. It's very makeable down here. And we'll see if that 4 peaks out enough for him to get a shot afterwards, if he makes it. I'm out here. Mike Saleh, who we've come to know quite well through these matches and typically takes a timeout each rack. We believe maybe every rack. I don't know that we can recall one where they didn't utilize the timeout. No, and sometimes too, when you're sitting in, um, you know, on the sideline, like on that nine ball earlier, it's hard to see exactly what the angles are. So even though you may not need to call a timeout, when he sees something that goes, wait a minute, this could be trouble, then if you have a timeout, why not take it? And this is big too, as far as the shot after this combination. You're not just looking at this, unless he has him, he may have him duck here behind the nine. That would surprise me a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I'm a little surprised there. That was a very makeable, just pretend you're sh cutting the ball down the rail. It was a very makeable, especially as close as seven is to the pocket, but went for the defense. Oh, I think Leroy is struggling a little bit. This is skill level seven. You're used to seeing him make those. It could be nerves. It could be that his stroke is a hair off or he's trying to rush things. You never know. But I was expecting him to make that shot. But again, pressure's on. There's a few dollars on the line here in the championship, and you got your team. You know, he's the kind of the clutch player. He's the highest skill level player on the team, and you know that pressure gets heavy. can hear a pin drop in here right now, and it's just very quiet. I 
Well, another opportunity for Leroy. Spun around nicely there. Does he get an angle to get on the seven? Nice beaut there is a nice pretty stroke. Very smooth, very controlled. He can shoot this with some right spin now and come around three rails for the eight ball over here, or he can go across and back. Oh, wow. All right. Defense behind the nine, I'm guessing. Nice shot. He looks focused now. Looks like he's ready to pounce. That's the best look you can have. Sit on the edge of the seat <laughs> and be ready to just go. When you start hanging with your head, that's going to do nothing but pump your opponent up when they see weakness. Don't let them see you sweat. Oh, Ooh, nice just try. Missed just missed it. Good try, Sonny. Chance to pick up three more points for Lee Ray, Leroy in this rack. Eight in the side, positioned well on the nine. No problem with that. His rack master teammates approve. By way of fist bump. Captain with a little words of wisdom there. You see our two teams here in the nine ball championship. Rack Masters, they're out of Florence, Kentucky. And Lep Life out of Philadelphia. Solid break. Yeah. Eight ball, Two five balls. ball, and the three cue balls ball on the, the break. Whole, the one. <laughs> three balls wow. on the break. And no shot. How about them apples? But he let the cue ball go a little bit. It got a little knocked around, and he was fortunate that he didn't scratch there. So I'm glad he's, I'm sure he's glad just having a shot of any kind right now. Wonder if he's curving this or can he make it clean? No, he can make it clean. Oh, there's that smooth stroke. There's that smooth stroke that showed up at the end of the last rack. First time we've seen it, but I have a feeling now that he found his stroke, it's not going to be the last. No, there was a little jump up again and where he dropped his shoulder Even just worse a little a bit. Scratch, yeah. And what a pretty table that Sonny is stepping into now. Just a stop shot on this seven. Six ball can be made and just drift down towards the, I mean, on this four. Stop shot here, drift down, natural position down towards the seven. Off the six. A really good opportunity to get five here.
Six in the side. All right, didn't drift down enough on this seven. We'll see what he's going to do. Could shoot a bank, safe. Or a Mike Soleil timeout. Or out. Mike Soleil timeout. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. Bank safe or a Mike Soleil timeout. I'm going to have a t-shirt made for Mike. <laughs> nice look at Pool Dog Arena. A lot of fans sticking around. Waiting to see the outcome of the final match here at the APA World Championships. I like play playing the bank here. The reason I like the bank is because if you shoot a stop shot, chances are if he misses it, it's going to leave a snooker here. So just hit dead solid on it. And that is looking good. That'll work. And as you can see, even if it didn't, you had built-in safety, even if it hung up there. So huge bank shot there. Chance to pick up another three points total. That's nice. The battle continues, folks. Been neck and neck throughout this championship match. Why should the fifth and final match be any different? Quick rack as well. Sonny George Johnston. We mentioned he went from a four to a five. After the semifinal match, Leroy Smith, skill level seven. Sonny will have the break. Three balls oh, on the break, break for Sonny. This table is leaking a little bit, I believe. <laughs> Three balls on the break and then this shot on the one ball. And it doesn't get much better than that. Another quick three points there for Sonny on that break. Again, because of the skill level differential, he only has to get to 38 points to Leroy's 55. And it's hard to mess this up, at least the first three balls. I want to jinx and do the commentator jinx by any means, and I'm sure you guys can see that for yourselves if it follows this a little bit. Well, he didn't follow it, but he had a good chance to follow up to this area. Then he could have played the angle to come down here. Now he's going to have to do a lot more with the cue ball. And here comes Mr. <laughs> Mr. Timeout Time Out himself. <laughs> Somebody back in Philly, get him a shirt that says Mr. Time Out. He's earned it. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's no reason. that He's in potentially some trouble here because he's on the incorrect side. So... Of course, you would. I would take a timeout in a heartbeat here. Being where he's at, I'm not sure that I would tell him. <laughs> Perfect world if he's got the power to come around the table. But you really have to muscle this to come around and get a lot of spin on the cue ball to help pick up speed to come around, or it's going to just die on you. Did he get far enough? Sure did. Nice shot. Yeah, I too am a little confused why some of these players have a problem with Mike Salid giving timeouts. It must be teams that don't play. I mean, if you have a timeout and, and you think you can help the player, then by all means. Why would you not? One little tester left being on the rail. A shot. Nine in the corner, 
Another two points for Sonny Johnston. And that was a break and run. I mean, the first half of that rack was kind of, I wouldn't say automatic, but close to it. Three balls on the break and then having that shot on the one and the two. Came on the wrong side of the three, but worked it out with some help of his coach. Came all around the table, and then that's all she wrote. See if we can get a score update here. 23-16 now in favor of George Sonny Johnston, 15 points away, Ava. Yep, and the Leroy's thing about... Leroy's going to need some runs. Yeah, and Leroy, I mean, he's skill level seven, so chances are that he, if he gets loose, he showed signs there of really letting that pretty stroke out. If he can avoid kind of dropping his shoulder when he's close to the rail, find some rhythm, get a little bit of luck here and there. But he first has to stop our friend Sonny from getting a few rolls. Yeah, got he the two on the break. And not only that, but look at the shot he's got on the one ball. All he has to do is make it. Cue ball out here for the three. A little tricky getting on this four. Not sure he has a draw shot in his repertoire and how good of his draw shot is. <laughs> it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I like that. <laughs> Used to love watching that show. <laughs> but quite appropriate here is Sonny George Johnston is at the table doing everything he can to Help his team, Lep Life, bring that championship back to Philadelphia. As I look at his teammates, they all look very stressed out, <laughs> rubbing <laughs> lots of foreheads, looking down. Meanwhile, the Rack Masters, well, there's only about two of them in the arena right now, except for Leroy. Three, I should say. All right, try to draw back there. Very difficult to do unless you're holding a very level cue. You're coming down on it like that. Unless the balls are really close together, you're not going to draw it. It requires a nice smooth stroke with a level cue. So now we're going to see what he can do here. If he can still pocket this or if he's going to play defense. That's a good speed for defense. Smart play. Good hit, but look at the combo he just left here. See the 4-9, it's not straight on, but not far from it. And if he doesn't hit it too firm, four ball might land on the rail. Cue ball's going to the left. Ah, he made it. 4-9 combination in the corner. Two more points for George Sonny Johnston, now 10 points away. Leroy still at 16, and again, he's got to get to 55, so... I need to make something happen quick. Tough it's to do to from the chair, yeah, though. Yeah, no kidding, huh? If uh, Sonny keeps up with this break of his, um, it's an uphill battle. I mean, he's breaking really well and keeps getting a really good shot, an opportunity on the one ball. There's not much Sonny can do, whether somebody runs out on you or not. If they, can, if they control the table and have a chance to play defense, um, like you said, not much you can do. When you step up with no shot or you're in the chair. Oh. Well, I'm sorry if I jinxed that for you, Sonny. Off the table. <laughs> breaking so great until that point. Mm -hmm. 
That was a dry break. Cue ball went flying off the table. It's going to give ball in hand to Leroy. He's going to need to put together some ball runs here. Yeah, it's going to quickness. Try to map it out here. The four ball is obviously of concern as far as getting to the correct spot. Worst case scenario, as long as you can see the four, you got a chance to, but now he's in trouble all of a sudden already. Two straight to get over on the three. He might be able to slam it. Cheat the pocket a little bit. Uh, oh, no. All right, need to go back to w making one. You're trying to create too much right now or feeling bad. Time for... Leroy to just go to one ball at a time. Just one ball at a time. That's all you need. Play position for the next one. If you can't m run out, then you play defense. All right. Good shot there. As far as the shot making part, let the cue ball go a little bit. But again, he's getting close now where if he makes one, two, three balls per rack, Unless Leroy really creates something, then uh, they're going to take the championship here. So, Timeout. Mm, he wants him to play defense and hide behind the six here, potentially. Touchy little shot he's asking him to do. Sounds like there's a viewing party going on down at the crazy leprechaun. <laughs> the Lep Life House. Hope you folks are doing well this evening, enjoying the match. That was a tall order. That was a tough shot there that he asked him to come with. And I wonder if Leroy can make this and come down this way if that's even available. How about them apples, people? That was a good <laughs> shot right there. Yeah, he deserved some loving on that one. Even the opponents, hashtag lip life, they all applauded for that shot as well. Nice. Key shot. No. Kind of killed it there. That reverse spin tends to ha make that happen, but still got a chance here. Just keep your head down on this six. There's that smooth stroke again we were talking about. That corner looks like our friend Leroy here has loosened up a little bit. Sonny has really taken advantage when he's had good things going his way and his strong break. <laughs> Leroy has made a few mistakes so far that is kind of uncharacteristic. I have a feeling for him. He's taken his eye off the ball or nerves, whatever it is. We all do it. But Sonny has answered, and him and Mike here have been working as a good team in the timeouts this time. So we can see with that nice run, we'll see if Leroy can loosen up a little bit, still stay focused, not get careless, but not be afraid of missing. That's the worst thing that can happen to you is once that gets in your head, you're in trouble. And his job now is just to inch his way, take his time, play smart, stay focused. You can't, you know run 20 racks in two shots. You gotta just 
one at a time. Nothing on the break and straight in shot here for Sonny. He's been sitting for a little bit. We'll see if he can answer here. Straight in shot, just shoot a stop shot and the two is right here. Oh, <laughs> banked it in. Made it interesting. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Pockets the one in the corner. Good position on the two ball as Sonny inches closer to victory with each ball and each point. There's another on the board. Left himself a long one here. He is now seven points away from victory. Leroy still 30 points out. Six points away from victory. I have a feeling we're going to see Mike again in this spot. Here he comes. I guess, yes, uh, George goes by Sonny. That's why we keep it. Is his name is George. The question is, why do they call him Sonny? Is it the blonde hair? Is it the bright personality? <laughs> I don't know. What's the reason we call him Sonny? It's got to be somebody out there that knows Sonny enough to know why. Maybe that's his middle name, too. It could be Sonny. See if he can avoid scratching off the 4-9 here. He banked it. Good shot. Oh no, did he go too far? No, he's good. Really got really quiet in here. Ouch. Oh, <laughs> he'll take it. It's almost straight in. Shouldn't have any problems making it, but he can't follow this really well because he's afraid of... Well, maybe he can with that double hitting. Ooh. Might just want to jack up a little bit and take the tougher shot on the eight. All right, nice shot. Oh, wow. Three huge points here that we can make this. Yep, if he picks these two balls up, that would be three points. He would be three away. And with the way he's breaking, he could have those very quickly On in the, the break, next rack. Correct. Eight in the corner. There was some body English on that one. <laughs> he was trying to help it get in the pocket. Three points away from victory is Sonny Johnston and the team of Lep Life. He will have the break. Ava, feels like we are coming to the end here very quickly. Yeah, huh? 
Yeah, it's, um, you know, Sonny definitely had, has been on, but as a skill level five, he hasn't really done anything incredible. But, his, you know, his super break, um, keeping his head cool, made some good decisions and got, got help with a lot of great coaching from Mike Saleh. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I have to say, Leroy, I don't think Leroy was really on to them, and he's made some great, I love his stroke when it's right. But then he will drop his shoulder every once in a while or rush his stroke. And I have a feeling that he isn't playing as well as he is definitely capable of. Got the one on the break, down oh, to two points. Got a little Stuck unlucky behind here. behind three, though. Time out here for Lep Life. I tell you what, though, Jason. Regardless of who wins this match, it's been a phenomenal match to it watch. It has. It really has. There's been. It's like we've seen everything: great breaks, tons of nerves, comebacks, close matches. You know, it's been really fun to watch it so far, and I have no doubt that the end of this is going to be good as well. Let's see if we can kick this. It'll be Mike's fault if it doesn't go right. <laughs> Oh, oh, what a shot. <laughs> Talk about a timeout. Yeah. And perhaps that is poetic to what's going on in this match uh, with yeah. the, the timeouts. And whew, what Mike a shot. Not, not, you know, their best player not being able to play, but he has definitely been a part of this match. Made some interesting decisions, but he sure has come with some great suggestions for his players. And not it wasn't going to happen Watch there. Out. Does not scratch, oh, he though. got lucky there. A little smile and shake of the head there from Leroy going, really? That couldn't fall in? One big point away, Lep Life. The celebration will have to wait. See if I don't know if the three ball is makeable. Yeah, it is. That'll go clearly right into this pocket right here. I'm pretty sure. Or you can shoot the combo. Shoots a defensive shot here. I'd be really impressed at, at his patience. So <laughs> he wanted it <laughs> because I just wanted to be over with. <laughs> Victory celebration delayed at least momentarily again. Libor, Leroy struggling with the three ball there in the side. Yeah, and Sonny Johnston now for the win. Team is sitting on the edge of their seats. <gasps> no. <laughs> And a scratch in the side. We'll see. Leroy is still in it. <laughs> Rack masters aren't out yet. Again, we talk about it all the time. I mean, either way, these teams are done what thousands and thousands and thousands of players only could dream of first getting to Vegas and then getting here to the finals not just a payday but that second bragging to trophy that they could go home with so either way whatever happens they should be so proud of themselves for having gotten through all this Kicks this. You hit right about Coming in here. 
You should be able to slide it down. Table's going to slide a little bit. Looks like he's aiming it right, maybe a little bit long, but he's, it should be okay. This could be it, people. There it is. Pockets that four in the corner. And the celebration is on for Lep Life here in Pool Dog Arena. Celebration is on back at the clay <laughs> Crazy Leprechaun back in Philadelphia. Your newest champions, folks. Lep Life from Philadelphia, congratulations. $20,000 richer. Teams shake hands and congratulate each other on a great tournament. Lots of activity here in Pool Dog Arena. See if we can get a word with the new champs. And while we wait, we do want to congratulate our runners up, the Rack Masters, Florence, Kentucky, the folks back in Florence. Should be very proud of their team making it all the way to the final match here in Las Vegas, and they're taking home $10,000 for their efforts. But the moment, folks, belongs to the Lep Life, Philadelphia's own. As they make their way into the pit arena, looks like Casey is about to get a quick word with them. And let's hear what they have to say about their big victory. Someone's got to talk to me. All right, just make sure to hold the, okay. hold the mic to your Hey, guys, it's Casey. I am here at the World Pool Championships, winner of the Nine Ball World Championship, <laughs> Lep Life from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys feeling right now? surreal it's absolutely surreal like the, the last two weeks were just absolutely insane we fell a little bit short in eight ball and then we came and snapped it off a nine ball it's just what a, i can't say enough about this team like we lost our best shooter and these guys stepped up in the final two matches and pulled it out like, absolutely yeah so the roller coaster of emotions that we were seeing throughout this match was pretty close and you know throughout the whole team kind of i was watching on the sidelines it kind of seems like it's a f family dynamic would you agree yes 100 percent so how long have you guys been playing together? A year. A year. But we've known each other and we play on other teams together. So we all like, pretty much work together, hang together. Just, it's a, it definitely is a family. Awesome. So how was the competition throughout the many teams in the nine ball tournament? Absolutely insane. I, I can't say enough about the rest of the teams. Like these guys, hell of a team, hell shooters. They should hold their head high. Like what a, what a week. Absolutely, yeah. So any big shout outs you want to give to anyone at home watching Philadelphia? Back you guys had quite the comment section. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Lep Life. I know you're going crazy in a boy. I just seen it on the cameras. <laughs> awesome. Well, winner of twenty thousand dollars. What What are your big plans for the money, guys? Probably a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to appreciate the honesty. We are in Vegas. Awesome. Any last words for you guys? I just want to say what's up to my boys, my boy Grammy. The rest of the, like, what a week. Like, shout out Jeff, our league operator, and Diane for going to pick our pants up at 6 o'clock in the morning last week. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I love you, Jeff. <laughs> I mean, can we trade some of the money back in for the Bulldog? Oh, Frank? <laughs> yeah, he's a very valuable member of the marketing team. I was say, without Jeff, nothing is possible. Thank no. you, Jeff. I just said that. Oh, Jeff, you. you're the man. Without the league operators, none of this would be possible. No. But thank you guys. Congratulations again. Lep Life from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Thank Winner you. Winner of your nine ball world championship. Thank you, thank you guys. <laughs> A special <laughs> moment for the team from Philadelphia, the Lep Life. Congratulations, Ava. Our journey has come to a close here at the World Championships. And ended uh, with a bang, didn't we? It did end in a bang, yeah. and uh, what a journey it's been. Folks, we really appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you, hope you enjoyed all of our coverage. Special thanks to our friends at PoolDog.com for presenting uh, sponsorship and making sure we could bring you this great, great event in its entirety. So hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time.